like sales. Hold on here for a second here. I got I got to tell your guy, Meryl Reese. What a great guy. By the way, 430 today, Meryl Reese is going to step in with us, and we're going to talk with him. You know what he said? He He said this. He would like to see he would like to see Jason Kelsey retire. He would like Jason Kelsey to retire. I want to know why. So we'll talk to our friend Mel Reese. That'll be at 4:30. Appreciate all of you coming aboard here. Thank you very much. All-Star Weekends. Let me say this to you. The only All-Star game that matters any longer, the only All-Star game that was ever good was the Major League Baseball All-Star game. And and also the slam dunk contest. You got to just get rid of this whole thing and do something different. I mean, the celebrity basketball game was more competitive than that thing they put on last night. I mean, you do a disservice to your sport when you see players not giving a shit. Or half-ass efforts. I mean, and, and and I heard the guys talking before us. I went like this. You know, do you play it after or during the um, finals? Do, do, do you have like a game where you play it in between one of the off days? And you kind of have a celebration on the side? I don't know. I, I really, I don't. Because something like that, I don't think you can fix. I think that's just... You can't fix it because no one gives a shit. So if you don't care, I mean, I don't know. I I, I really don't know. Baseball's all-star game is probably still the best. It's always been the best. But, you know, and this has been a culture thing. And Tone said it right earlier. The younger players look at the older guys going, I don't give a shit either. They don't give a shit. Why should I give a shit? And what you do is you built up over the last 20 years, you've built up an angst for playing in the game. You got incentives in your contract. If you make the all-star game, uh, you know what? I'm not going to sit here and spend a lot of time on it. All I'm saying is it's like a wasted weekend. You know, the NFL plays touch football. That thing got more ratings, I guarantee you, than that game did last night. Probably three times as much ratings. NFL got away from the all-star game, too. They're not going to put their players in a Pro Bowl setting where they could get injured. It's just not going to happen. I mean, the Pro Bowl sucked. For about 20 years. It did. I mean, some back in the day, you needed the money. Now, you, I, I think it's got a lot to do with that. These guys don't need the chicken shit money they get for playing in the game. These guys make $30 million a year, the guys who make it to the All-Star game. Some make 50. Why would I play in a game that doesn't matter? I, 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 I don't blame them. I, I don't blame them. I'm not playing in a game that doesn't matter. This doesn't make any sense to me. Like I said, Merrill Reese will join us. That'll be at 430. All right. This is getting into now the business side of football. And we're now getting into the calendar part of the schedule for the NFL that you have some pretty tough decisions to make. Um, But before I do that, I have to hit on Chris Sims. I'll get into the business end of it here in a minute. Let me address Chris Sims' comments on Jalen Hurts. And I, I'm not going to go all in on it. I'm just going to say he basically said he's overrated. It, 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 and anything he says, because one of a little bit of the comment was a backhanded slap. Then, of course, he went into saying he was overrated. Or he went in first and said he's overrated. Then a couple backhanded slaps on his talent. He works hard, uh, all the bullshit stuff to kind of like soften the punch. Why did Sims do it? Some of it is true. Most of it is for reaction. And you have to kind of dissect it. Not all of it is false. Okay? First, let's get into why he did it. Philly reaction. The Philadelphia Eagle fans, 
they're going to react. Should have heard Tom going in on him. Holy cow. Sim sucked as an NFL guy, it's, and, and he doesn't do that. Sim sucked here. Sim sucked there. This guy didn't do shit in his career. This, he's not wrong. But that's a fan, and he is a fan protecting his guy. Hey, I could be critical of Jalen Hurts. This is tone. But Sim's talking like that? Eh. Taking a shot at my guy. Hurts season, baby. So I get it. It's reaction. And many people have to validate their takes instead of just admitting it. You see, some of you in here, and th th this is where LJ and I go back and forth. LJ likes Sims's take. That's what he, LJ, am I, tell me if I'm wrong, LJ. I don't want to speak for you here. But LJ doesn't want Sims to change his opinion. Who doesn't want him to change his opinion? Like, if Hertz plays well, LJ would want Sims to say he still sucks. Right, LJ? Or if, if Jalen plays better, he doesn't want to give him his kudos. Is that right? Okay. So no matter what Jalen Hurts does, he sucks and should stick to saying he sucks. Okay? Like, this year, I didn't think he played well. Last year, he was great. You shouldn't say that. You should just say he sucks. See, me, on the other hand, guy plays well, you give him his flowers. Guy plays poorly, you give him his booze. That's how I look at it. Okay? That's how I look at it. So... I, I kind of is Jalen wrong? I think Jalen. I, I mean, is uh, Sims wrong about him being overrated? Um, no. For me personally, acknowledging a bad season is one thing. To say he's overrated, the guy in the game is just click. It, it it is tone. It is. What he should have said. They paid him too soon. I like to have seen the guy put a couple of years together where you could say the guy's really got something going here. Because let's be candid here. We've seen three different seasons from Jalen Hurts. You can't definitively say that this guy is a um, consistent quarterback. There's nothing consistent that he's done in his NFL career yet. Nothing. See, the way he put it out there, it was clickbait. But what he's saying, in my eyes, how I look at it, Jalen Hurts has given you three different seasons. And no one's talking about his hunger for the game, his smarts for the game, his ability. The facts are, has he not given you three different seasons? There's nothing consistent about his career yet. Nothing. Mahomes gives you consistency, okay? That's a consistent career. To some aspects, I think we're seeing some consistency out of Josh Allen. He's won four straight AFC East titles. He's got to go through a gauntlet of some of the best quarterbacks. Hey, throws for a lot of yards, turns the ball over a lot, throws for a lot of touchdowns. That's who he is and spend kind of what you're going to get these next couple of years. Jalen, I'm not sure. Hey, is that consistent? You know, kind of. Kind of. LJ goes down year. Okay. LJ, down year? Yes. But he hasn't put two years together yet where you can call him a consistent ball player yet. So I kind of got what he was doing. He just went about it the wrong way. Is Jalen Hurts overrated? No. No, he's not overrated. Okay, he's not. Overrated is Zach Wilson. That's overrated. Overhyped, I think, is the difference. Might be Trevor Lawrence. Might be Trevor. Overhyped could be Brock Purdy. 
Hey, I got to see something out of, I want to see another year out of Purdy. Hey, I think half of last year, this year, I think he's well on his way. But do I have to see another year out of Brock Purdy before I'm going to pay him $50 million? You bet your ass. Absolutely. The one thing about Hurts that's consistent, he keeps you in the playoffs. Okay. Fair enough. Right? Like Allen, keeps you in the playoffs. Okay. So does Brock Purdy. Two years? I mean, like I said, he's five and two in the postseason is Brock Purdy. He's done just as much as Jalen. Just as much with better offensive numbers. Okay? Just as much. Do, when I look at Brock, do I see Jalen? It's not how you drive. It's kind of how you arrive. Two different ways of getting to the same destination. It's just how, differently, you know? But they're kind of the same guy. Their, their, their careers are parallel with one another. Not thought of much coming out of college when it came to being a high pick. You know, Jalen's a high pick. Is he a first rounder? No. Purdy's not a high pick. Is Purdy overachieving? Oh, yes. Is Jalen? Yes. Yes, that first round designation and that distinction that you get when you're a first rounder goes a long way when it came, comes up to your, your career timeline. You get extra time if you're a first rounder than you do if you're a second or a seventh. You get extra time. I guarantee you if Brock Purdy falls back next year, San Francisco will be debating whether or not to pay him and keep him. If Brock Purdy was a first rounder, that, that that conversation would not be there because they invested the resources. They invested a first-round pick. Okay? They do. Um, Purdy's America's sweetheart. <laughs> I, I think they like the fact that he's an um, overachiever. Sure. Okay. Sales, guess who's been helping the Lions with drafts since 2021? John Dorsey. Hire him as the Eagles GM. That does not surprise me. John Dorsey's the guy that found and was the guy that went and saw uh, Mahomes and took him over to Sean Watson. Everyone wanted Deshaun Watson in Kansas City. Everyone did. Dorsey even traded up to get him. That wasn't an Andy Reid move. Andy Reid did not draft Patrick Mahomes. John Dorsey did. John Dorsey also built the Browns. Much of the talent you see that's in Cleveland, Dorsey did that too. Okay? If Hertz was drafted in the seventh round, would he get the grace Purdy gets? No, he's black. No. 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 He would not. I hate to put it that bluntly, but you know I'm right. Yeah, John Dorsey is a brilliant talent evaluator. Okay? Oh, I'm sorry, Maxon. Can't handle the truth, huh? Okay. No topic about racism today. I just answered a question. Well, you, you are you under the impression that black athletes and black quarterbacks get the same uh, latitude that white quarterbacks do, especially ones that are drafted in latter rounds? It was a question answered. Move on. You don't like it? Uncomfortable? Great. That's what we do here. You're uncomfortable? I love it. We answer hard questions here. Okay. We don't skate over topics. We never do, never have, okay? Racism isn't a topic. Racism, racism is part of our culture. So 
It's part of everything. Class system, poor, rich, all of that. Sad thing is Dorsey was in our building, how we exiled him. Is that right? John Dorsey was in Philly? Sills, what do you think uh, Jalen's ceiling is? I'm going to write that down before I get to our main topic here. So the thing with Sims, hurts his ceiling. Okay. John Dorsey was in the Eagle building. When was this? Sills John Dorsey in charge of Eagle drafting, how he handles the books. I would love that. That, in my opinion, is the perfect scenario. John Dorsey was in the building, really? Dorsey was in Philly in 2020 as a front office consultant. No way in the world. No way in the world. When when Howie Roseman got back into power, he was going to have John Dorsey in the building. Dorsey's bedside manner is not the best. Okay? Hey, same year Hertz was drafted, I guarantee you he put an evaluation. I wonder if John Dorsey did the homework on Hertz for them to draft him and how he once again taking credit for something that he really didn't do, like the 17 Super Bowl. Okay? John Dorsey's brilliant. He could he runs circles around, totally runs circles around Howie when it came to talent evaluation. Just runs circles around him. Now, now here, here, get this. You know why Andy got rid of him? Why do you think Andy got rid of John Dorsey in Kansas City to bring in Brett Veach or elevate Brett Veach? Why do you think that is? So they could take credit for Mahomes. John Dorsey drafted Mahomes. Chris Carter, Shannon Sharp, everybody at ESPN went like this to Sean Watson will win titles before Patrick Mahomes will ever think about it. I posted a video of it, of all those guys saying that Mahomes will never win. He's too reckless. He's undisciplined. He doesn't have the characteristics to be a superstar player. That was Shannon Sharp. And you know what John Dorsey said? I disagree. I think he has all the intangibles to be a phenomenal player in this league. And I think he's going to win us multiple championships. It's on my Twitter page at Dan Celio show. He disagreed completely with everybody. He was on an Island. I wonder if Reed was even on an Island. So you got to draft this guy. Well, they must have because they moved up. Could, they moved up to get him, so they must have all agreed at the end. Okay? If you had a guy like John Dorsey in your building, boy, man, would that help the Eagles. Then I would feel comfortable giving the draft picks to Howie. Hey, you know what? You know what? If you're John, you should just tell Howie, hey, you want to take the credit? Just put me in the building. The problem you have with John John has a way of looking at players. And the analytics guy are now getting in the way. See, John, John drafts people in here. There's something about this guy. There's something about Tyree Kill. What college did Tyree Kill go to? I don't remember him in college. Does anybody know? John Dorsey drafted him. Does anybody know who... What college he went to? Tyree Kill? It's a John Dorsey guy. Okay? He's a Michigan. He went to Michigan? West Alabama. Howie Roseman ain't drafting anybody out of West Alabama. Unless they live in Western Alabama, but went to Alabama. West Alabama? Where's that? I mean, I don't even think that's an HBCU school. I think Alabama State, if I'm not mistaken, is Alabama A&M, I think it is. 
I think Alabama A&M is HBCU. Man, it's another Dorsey guy. So, uh, hey, Andy Reid drafted Travis Kelsey? I don't think so. John Dorsey drafted him. Now, there's a history with Jason and Philly. That he probably had a lot more to do with that, for sure. Chris Jones, John Dorsey. Honey Badger, John Dorsey. All them guys. New to talent. Okay. Hey, senior, why? It's a great question. Why has John Dorsey been let go from so many NFL teams? Because you know why? He fights the analytics department that try to tell him what player and the analytics that a player has that fit a system that they're trying to implement. And he's just an old school guy that doesn't believe the analytics people should be involved in player personnel. And that's why he gets fired. Like here, here, get this. The analytics people in Cleveland, my friend Alonzo Highsmith was in Cleveland. They hated Miles Garrett. They didn't want anything to do with Miles Garrett when he was at AM. You know why? Miles Garrett said, you know, I like football. I like it. I'm not in love with it. And they had a cow with it. You know what John Dorsey said? Well, I'll take his like because his like is as good as anybody in the league. And I'll take his like. So he drafted him. Okay? He drafted him. Because the player says something doesn't mean you go by his actions, not what he says. You know, before we get into the main topic, I think this is a topic nobody's been bringing up, and we're going to bring it up. I kind of broached it here with um, with Tone here for a second, but we'll do it again. We're going to do it here in a minute. I was asked a question a couple minutes ago about Jalen Hurts' ceiling. Here's my take on Jalen Hurts' ceiling. And, and I'm not going to put any player in comparison to it because I don't know what he's going to look like. Jalen Hurts' ceiling from 2022. Here's, here's my – here's my this is a prediction now. This is a prediction. Here's my take on Hurts. 2022 Jalen Hurts, probably 10 years. Three Super Bowl appearances, maybe a win, and he's out of the league like Aikman with an injury, probably an 11 or 12, something like that. Jalen Hurts, 2013, 14 years, never get back to the Super Bowl, competitive, go to the playoffs have a career that kind of resembles McNabb a little. Like that. Maybe an NFC title game. And he'll have, in today's NFL, decent passing numbers. The 22 one, three Super Bowl appearances, 10, 11-year career. Have a year in there where he could fight for the MVP again. The 23 hurts, 14, 15 years maybe. Some sporadically good years. Other than that, never get back to the Super Bowl. Bunch of playoff games. Have a losing record in the postseason as a quarterback. He has one now. Um, something like that. That's how I see it. That's what I think his ceiling is. Now you ask me, well, wait, you gave me two different Hertzes. Well, yeah, I've seen two different Hertzes. I've actually seen three different Hertzes. I don't know what I'm going to see yet. This year coming up here, his fourth year starting, surely I hope it defines who he is because we still don't know. You paid for a guy you don't know what he is yet or what you want him to be, which is insane. You paid a guy $50 million. Now, again, the cap hits as we've been saying, are not catastrophic to the team. They're just not. 
shit, your corner, your corner and your edge rusher are more devastating to your cap than the quarterback. So um, I, you're all right paying it if you're okay paying it. I don't believe the owners want to pay that kind of money for – I mean, if Jeffrey Lurie was asked the question, did you get your $50 million worth this year? He'd absolutely say no way. If Kellen Moore, LJ says, can't fix this offense, then no one can. Well, I'll tell you, LJ, I don't think he really did a great job when Justin Herbert was healthy. I, I, I don't think – and, and quite frankly – when he was the offensive coordinator in Dallas, Dak Prescott led the NFL in INTs. What has he done in the last two years that makes you think he's going to turn Hurts around as a coordinator? Can you tell me? Why is everybody so gung-ho that Kellen Moore is going to fix this when his last two years as a coordinator have been failures? When it comes to the position that he coaches, Dak led the NFL in turnovers. And last year, that that team was a train wreck. Tell me. It's like a lot of optimism. And in the last two years, he hasn't had a lot of success. Okay. Let's get to the main topic here. The Philadelphia Eagles have a pretty big decision coming up to make. And you tell me what you would do. They have to decide by May 2nd if they are picking up Devontae Smith's fifth-year option, which would be a payment of $15 million for 2025. Or do you extend him now? and offer him a contract extension. What do you do? And that would mean that if you give him an extension, you're going to be paying an essence of $100 million between three players. What do you do? I don't believe he can be tagged. Because he's not a free agent. I don't believe that. He He's eligible for an extension. Because they have to decide by May 2nd. If they're going to. Ex they're going to exercise the fifth year. That would mean 15 million dollars. They would pay him next year. What do they do? What would you do. If you're the Philadelphia Eagles. I went back and forth on this, too. I did. I went back and forth on this because there's too much money that's out there right now that you have to negotiate with other players. Devontae, because here, here's what you have next year. You have Landon Dickerson to deal with and Jordan Mulata, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tone. You have two players that you got to pay an excess of $20 million next year. You, you don't want to do three players of $20 million, do you? What do you do? And this is why I say A.J. Brown's $25 million. Hassan Reddick's 15 He wants 25 Your two corners are killing you like a stranglehold. Okay? What do you do? Because at the end of next year, in the offseason, you'll have to extend them. And that money will be in the 25 to $30 million range. How many people think that when, when his, this year and then the fifth-year option, okay, when Devontae goes into that fifth-year option, he's going to command $25 million. There's just no getting around it with the cap. I thought the cap was going to be around 239. It's going to be around 243. So that means it's growing at 19.5 now instead of 18.1. That means the economics are getting bigger. And the money and the payoff from the TV networks are getting bigger. That's fantastic for the players. Gives a little more latitude to the Eagles, too, because they'll have a little more cap room now. Instead of 20 million, 23 million, you're looking at 26 million. That's great. 
You're going to need it. Okay? If I extend him today, I'm trading Redick tomorrow. I'm not, I can't do it. I got too much money that's coming up. You got Hertz's contract kicking in. You got a $25 million nut over with AJ. You're paying $15 million to Goddard, $12 million to Goddard. Both your offensive tackles are making an excess of $16 million. I think Lane is making like $18 million. Then you got Landon. Then you got Jason Kelsey at 10. That's a lot of money. And it's all on the offensive side. When are you going to address your defense? So maybe you extend him and you pick up the fifth year option. I I I I mean, you've got to fix that. De- if you don't fix that defense, it won't matter what you do offensively. You could have Jalen Hurts can have an MVP type season. If you don't fix that defense, you're eight and nine. You're losing to, hey, if you were beating teams and beating them 33-31 and your quarterback was able to overcome the deficiencies on defense, I'd be saying this, well, Jalen will carry the team across the finish line. He's shown it. Well, after the one and seven finish, he couldn't overcome it. Now, bad coaching, absolutely played into it. Bad situational, all of that we know. We don't have to go back over that again. We've gone over it ad nauseum. Okay? MG goes, keep Reddick ex- and don't extend him. Okay? So you want you want you you want to pick up the fifth year option then. It's going to cost you money. This is going to cost Hey, when you when you give him that extension, you have to give him a signing bonus. If you extend him, if you pick the fifth year option up, you don't. You need money. They should just cut all dead weight draft excellent. And next year we have 50 plus million with cap space. The dead weight is your corners. <clears throat> I will never prioritize defense. We have no money to buy quality players. He's just going to continue drafting O-line and missing on third-round linebackers on drafted corners. Xavier, that's the that's the MO. Maddox and Bayard are gone. Bradbury will be back only positive with him is that he usually follows a bad season with a with a good one that's a true case that that that, that's true had a shitty year in new york came back had a great year last year got the bag of money had a down year this past season it's true you're counting on something like that though lj you know that's not that's I'm, i'm not sure that's a plan you're kind of hoping for wishful thinking a little bit there Okay. <laughs> John goes, what, what's in the cup? So what do you think? It's a rum and Coke? No, it's just a Coke, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm drinking rum and Coke. No, it's not, no, no, it's not happening. Uh-uh. Reddick will be gone. Slam Bradbury can come off the books. That's what I'd like to do. I'd like to get rid of both Reddick and Bradbury. If I could, okay, maybe get rid of Bradbury by picking up some of his contract and sending him someplace and doing it on a trade, getting a ladder round pick for him, but just get him out of there, get, get a pick. And so you could put a younger player there and a cheaper player. You know how you can compensate for losing one of your corners, draft a corner and move him. somehow move Bradbury. Hey, I'll tell you what, I'll pick up. Half the contract. Team might be open to do that. Pick up half the contract. You know, you got to get rid of one of those guys. And I think you got to get, 
you, you know what? You know what? I, I heard Rob say, Reddick's your – or somebody, I think, on the first take, I heard him say, Reddick's your best player. It didn't matter. And I don't think he is. That's not what the market value is. People say that Sweat's the best player on your defense. You don't go by opinion. You go by what people will pay. Now, is that guy going to get $25 million in the open market? I just, I would not pay that for him. I just would not. And I think that's why the Eagles said, go ahead, go take a look. We're, I'm not the only one saying that. The Eagles are also saying that. The Eagles are saying, I don't think you're a $20 million guy. Go see if you are. We'd like to know too. Maybe that changes the Eagles' opinion on him. Because guess what it does? Do you not agree? One of the things that I think they make a critical mistake on a lot of times is overvaluing their own players. He's not really one of their own. I don't believe if Howie had drafted him, he'd put him on the open market. But because he was a rental and a mercenary, he wants to know what the value. I don't blame him for doing this. It's like putting your house on the market. Let's see what the... He had no intention of selling it, but you want to see what the value is. You want to see what the market says. Do they want to buy it? Do they not want to buy it? What do they offer? If you got 70 people wanting to buy your house and you put the, the house on the market for a week, you know you got a strong market and people will pay more. So you pull it back off the market and you post it when you want to do it. I think that's exactly what they're going to do with Reddit. They're going to treat them like real estate here. They're looking at him like, hey, what do you think this kid's true value is? And to me, I think he's probably right where he is. I think he's a $15 million guy. I'm not paying him any more than that. I'm not paying him any more. Now, if I had more of a stouter defense, I, I probably would. I probably would pay him 18. And ha has he outperformed his contract? Um, how many people think he's outperformed his contract and what tackles and the way he covers or just in sacks alone? Like get this, if he has one significant injury, his season's over because if he can't get around the corner and pass rush, he's useless. Like, look how useless he was with a hand injury earlier in the year because of what tone talks about his unique size doesn't give him the affordability of overcoming deficiencies he has in his makeup and how he's built in stature when you're six five and you got a cast on your hand just get up put your hands up you're still you're still an issue out there even if you're not getting around the corner and you can't grab and pull you, you're still six five big guys beat up little guys every day in the NFL that's a fact. Little guys don't win in that game. I think Sweat is mid-level, not elite. Brian, Josh Sweat has a market value of $21 million. Reddick has a market of 15. Reddick put up 30 sacks in 37 games as an eagle. That's fantastic. It is. Now, if you could pass rush every down, he's a force. But if you get into ball games where teams are running the ball on you, he's a non-factor. And what did teams do this year? It beat you on first and third down. The Eagle defense was the worst on first and third down when it came to first downs. And the guy had a bunch of sacks. Uh, Hassan Reddick was like the Kirk Cousins of Pass rushers, completely no impact whatsoever in a one in seven slide. No impact. And when you're playing from behind, you're going to get more pass rush opportunities. I thought he was a force in 22. Because Gannon, you, I'll tell you this, man, Gannon used them right. He did. He didn't. After they figured out, and this is the guy that I was ripping early in the year until Gannon said, no, nah, you know what? 
And if you notice, once they got Linville Joseph and once they got Adama Katsu and they started stopping the run, what happened? He became better than Micah Parsons' pass rushing. He became a force. He himself wrecked the NFC title. He was the MVP in the NFC title game. I mean, third down sacks led the league, tackles for loss. He was a freaking force on a very good defense. When he's on a bad defense, he's Casper the Ghost, man. That's $15 million. Again, you pay for great players. You do. You don't want to give a guy like that up. But when you don't have 10 other guys that can stop the run or stop a pass, what's the point? Yeah, you have to have salary integrity on your side. Of th this whole thing is so backwards money-wise. You know, as great as Roseman is, he is absolutely fabulous at putting deals together. You know what he's not? At keeping salary cap integrity. It's top heavy. Oh, your money's on the O. You know why all the money's on the O? Because those are guys that you've extended and given second contracts to. What guy on that defense has he given second contracts to? Let's take a look at that. Fletcher. Brandy Graham. Sweat. And who else? Three out of 11. Three out of 11 guys have gotten second contracts on defense. Let's take a look at that on offense. They gave an extension to Malad a couple years back. Dickerson's getting another deal. Kelsey's gotten a couple contracts. Lane's gotten contracts. They just extended Hertz. Devontae's going to get another contract. Goddard got another contract. Seven of your 11 starters have gotten two or more contracts or will get two or more contracts. And you got three on defense. And the majority of the guys on defense that you gave extensions or new contracts to are in their 30s or mid-30s. Or you got a guy approaching 30. You have no young players on your defense. None. Shit, Jordan Davis, is he getting a second contract? I don't know. I don't know. This is where the missing on the draft picks has now kind of put you in a place where you got to go like this on Devontae Smith. Back to this. On May 2nd, you got to determine, am I going to pick up the fifth-year option, which means he makes $15 million for the 25 season. Okay? That gives you a little bit more time. Are you going to do that to him? Or are you going to extend him? Or are you going to wait? You can't wait because then get this. 24, he's a free agent. Smitty's got some leverage here. If you don't extend him at the end of 24, I believe he's a free agent if you don't pick up the 25 extension or the fifth-year option. Be an all, he'll be a free agent next year. So you got to determine what you're going to do here. You got a couple of weeks to figure out by May 2nd what you're going to do with him. Because he's a priority. That's a priority. You know, I started looking at some of the options and the extensions and 50 year options. And I said, wow, Smith has them by the short hairs a little bit here. Okay. He's got them by the short hairs a little. I, I really went back and forth because. There's so much money that has to be negotiated and you don't have, you know how people were saying, and, and, and not, not to say anything on tone or anybody, but a lot of people think this, well, it's the off season. We have some time here. You really don't. 
You really don't have time. Do you trade AJ again? This is why when I brought up the trading of AJ Brown and it picked some steam up, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Here's why. Well, you got landing coming up. You got to make a decision on Devontae Smith. You got to do something with those corners contracts. And you got to do something with Reddick. And next year also, Sweat's contract is up. And he's got a he's got a market value of 21 million. Who are you paying all this money to? Landon Dickerson is going to command $20 million. Okay. Devontae's going to command 20 million plus. Who are you paying? Sure got a lot of money on the offense. You got all your money's on off. The more you pay on offense, you know, you guys are going like this. How we will figure it out. So you want to figure out how to spend money to buy two wide receivers when you need two corners. And you want to spend an ex excess of $50 million on the perimeter instead of building it on the defensive side of the ball. Cornerbacks are more valuable than wide receivers. Don't kid yourself. A turnover is 10 times more valuable than anything A.J. Brown will do. A.J. Brown had a career year. What did it get you? Rolled in the playoffs. You had three turnovers between two people that made $25 million combined. The difference in your whole team was on that side of the ball. Team ran out of gas. Renegotiate Hurts. I, you know what, Neil? I don't know how that works. I'm going to have to ask Lee Steinberg how if, if they can do restructuring. of Because I know they do a lot of that with Mahomes. I know they do a lot of that with Mahomes. They, they re... They redo deals and they go back in and restructure the contract and they give the guy a bag of money. And every time you restructure, remember, you got to give more upfront money if you're going to do it. John says Hertz won't agree on it. Always remember, John, if you come to the table with a bag of money, everyone listens. Okay? Everyone listens. The only way you get people's attention in the NFL, especially agents, you give them an absurd amount of money up front. Here. Every team will listen. Here's $75 million. That year that Dak made $75 million, when they gave him the bonus in his first year of his deal, the guy made like $90 million or some shit, $70 or $80 million. An agent's going to listen to that. You know, signing Slay and Bradbury is the reason why Howie's in a bad position with defense. Those are always stupid signings. Senor, I don't believe that that signing Bradbury was a stupid move. I, I, he had an all-pro type season in 22. I, I can't sit here on a Monday on February 19th and go, that was a bad deal. Okay, the guy who thought he was out was Slay. Remember, he started putting the smoke signals up. Oh, good that buy and all this. Okay, hey, and by the way, now that's one of the reasons why I watch Sports Take a lot because these guys have a lot of good topics. And I heard somebody say, um, "Do you think that the Eagles would entertain Gardner Johnson? Why not?" Bobby Wagner went back to Seattle. That was as ugly as you can get that exit to Los Angeles. There were so many bad things that were said to John Snyder from Bobby Wagner. That relationship and that and, and that conversation between John Schneider, the general manager of the Seahawks, and Bobby Wagner was one of the most epic battles of all time. Guys calling each other names. One guy calling the other guy. Um, not a very good account. Not a, he calling him an accountant. Those guys fixed up their relationship, patched it up. He went back to Seattle. Don't let emotions run the way you do business. Okay? Because you may have to walk back over that bridge again. You don't want to torch the bridge. 
Dude, this is about getting your team better. This is not about emotions and feelings and all that other stupid shit. Guy plays with the Cowboys. So what? Kellen Moore was the offensive coordinator for the Cowboys. You have a problem with that? The Eagles didn't. Why would you? Think about that. The Eagles made a trade with the Cowboys, and they flopped moves to get Devontae and draft Devontae. Then they get the offensive coordinator of Kellen Moore, who was the coordinator there forever in Dallas. Only people who have a problem with that shit are the fans. It's dumb. It's dumb. Okay? He was a factor on your team a year ago. Health is a problem. That would, hey, well, Brian, look at it this way. Health is a problem. Great. I'm not paying you six and a half. Here's four and a half. And you get the player at the price you want. Instead of eight. You get him at half. And he only played three games this year. You get a guy who's going to come back healthier. You're going to get a guy at a cheaper price. And he's better than anything you got back there. Look at the glass half full. He's cheaper. You're not paying $8 million for it. How he walks into him and goes, I'll tell you what. We said some shitty things, both of us. Let's. You want to try to iron this out or no? And if the player goes, yeah, okay. This is what we're planning on doing. We want you to come back. I think you and Vic could have a really great time of it being here on this defense. However, four million bucks, four and a half with incentives that could probably get you up to Five and a half, six. With incentives, not six base. And you, and you bring the player back. You tell me if you wouldn't do this. You sign Gardner Johnson. You trade AJ to Denver. Or how about this one? You know, everybody's going to sleep on this uh, Jalen Johnson kid. You know, tomorrow, the Bears have to figure out if they're going to tag him. It's franchise tag day tomorrow. And if that kid's not tagged at 24, if I'm Howie Roseman, I'm on the horn with his agent immediately. Immediately. Okay? that's I, He is the second best corner. What, he's in the top three or four corners in the league. Sneed's not going to be available. I believe they tag him tomorrow. They're not going to tag Jones. I don't believe they're going to tag Chris Jones tomorrow. Because I don't think there's going to be a boatload of teams that are going to tag or that are going to offer $31 million to Chris Jones next year. Okay? Who's paying that? What team has the money to pay that? The Texans? Okay. They have the money. The commanders, okay, they have the money. All the good teams don't. Niners, Eagles really don't. Cowboys surely don't. They're 14 million in the hole. Okay. What good team? The Buffalo Bills, they're 44 million in the hole. I mean, you, you got to look at it. If, if Chris Jones gets signed, he's getting signed by a shitty team with a lot of dough. He's not getting signed by a contender. Josh Allen down in Jacksonville. Okay, Josh Allen in Jacksonville, they're probably going to franchise tag him. I would. I would. Eagles aren't going to franchise, you know... They're probably not going to, they're not going to franchise tag DeAndre Swift. It's just too pricey. They're not doing that. And by the way, don't be offended by that because I don't think the Giants are going to franchise tag Saquon Barkley either. The Raiders aren't going to franchise tag Josh Jacobs. You're not going to see any running back franchise. You might see Tony Pollard, 
But no, because the Cowboys are $14 million in the hole. And they got decisions to make when it comes to CD and Michael Parsons and Zach Martin and Tyron Smith. You got a lot of the, hey, these teams, this week is going to tell us a lot directionally on which teams are going to take steps forward or backwards. Here, I think the, I mean, how many people think the Eagles right now getting into tag day tomorrow are in a good place? Money-wise. Shit, you're not even talking personnel yet. Get this. You've got to move money. And you got to move some money off your offense. This is the problem. That's why, look, Tone and I say this all the time. A.J. Brown's a great ball player. But you've got to start moving money back over on that side of the ball if you want to be competitive. You're not competitive on defense. You are not competitive. So you've got to slide some money over there. This is a cap league. It's not just about signing and having the best player having the best players on your team the nfl has a salary cap for a reason why is that they love the word parity or mediocrity i don't know i think they're the same trade dickerson save 20 million i'm not trading landon dickerson what are you psycho i'm trading aj brown i don't you don't build a championship team from the perimeter in you build a championship team from the inside out. That's how you've gotten the two Super Bowls. Not because of your wideouts, but because of your lines. Dude, drafting a D lineman and an O lineman on a draft for a city like Philly sucks. Okay, because it's not fl flashy and fancy, and it's not it, it, it's it's it, it, it's it's not fantasy football driven. But you don't build Super Bowls that way. You build them with great lines. You got a $50 million quarterback. You can't have a $2 old line. So you want to trade Dickerson. That would mean this if Kelsey retires. You would be weak in the middle on a football team that struggled with the blitz, with a new coordinator coming in, and a quarterback that has to learn how to watch the blitz, learn how to avoid the blitz. I don't know. Why are you hurting him? If they cut Bard, they save $13 million. They're going to. They're going to. To me personally, you cut Bard, and you get somehow you've got to move Bradbury and you draft a corner or you sign a corner like the kid Johnson in Chicago. He's 24 years old. You could have that guy play. Hey, him and Slay sounds great. In a Vic Fangio defense, you take that $13 million, cut it in half, give some of the dough to Gardner Johnson, bring his ass back. Gardner Johnson, Slay, and Jalen Johnson from Chicago at your corner. I don't know. That looks sounds pretty good to me. Then you can work at your linebackers. You've got to move money. And, and see, Devontae, this decision here, if they if they extend him now, what does that mean? Okay, D they're going to have to pay money, and they're going to pay him twenty million now. Now maybe you pay him twenty because the cap hits aren't that devastating, because it hurts, and you take advantage of that by signing him. But you can't do all your money work on offense. You've got to address that side of the ball. Anything you do going forward, you know, we were talking, we were talking about this. Everything you do has to have ramifications on Hertz. Addressing Devontae Smith has nothing really to do with Hertz. Addressing the defense has everything to do with Hertz. Follow me here. That's how Kansas City won the Super Bowl. That's why Kansas City's going to win it again. 
is because they've opened that window up even further because the defense is getting better. Now they're going to have some issues to deal with. Sneed, in my opinion, they're probably going to put the tag on him tomorrow, and they're going to let Chris Jones walk. Or they'll try to negotiate. I, I think they've got like $24 million in cap space, and now with the cap being at 243 instead of 239 240 probably have a little extra cash, but he's going to command 30 <laughs> And here, I get it when people say, Cilio's insane, wanting to get rid of A.J. Brown. I don't want to get rid of him. That's not, maybe I needed it to land there. Maybe I needed it to land. I don't want to get rid of him. You think the Cowboys wanted to get rid of Amari Cooper? You think they wanted to get rid of Ezekiel Elliott? They may have a little. But those are Jerry's guys. He doesn't like to get rid of any of them guys. This is not, you think Kansas City wants to get rid of Chris Jones? No. Okay. That that's how the Chiefs are winning. DRC, two things: cap integrity and Mahomes. Right. It's the Brady formula. It's totally the Brady formula. Hey man, they don't have really anybody on the team because they got the guy. They're the only team in the league that has the guy. Until some someone shows us, until further notice. You guys are paying for hope. Kansas City has reality. You understand that? All these $50 million deals, like my good friend Tone says, it's potential. The guy in Kansas City, you don't hear that word thrown around any longer. Potential. That thing's five years old now. No way. They paid it and they got it. And everybody wants to take credit for it. Well... Nobody in that building right now could take credit for Patrick Mahomes. That's John Dorsey's guy. Everybody's now taking credit because they fired the guy. Okay, fam. Same shit in Philly. Oh, Jalen Hurts. Really? Okay. Wouldn't shock me if Dorsey had something to do with that too. Um, why wouldn't it? Everywhere he goes, he brings in massive talent. They need somebody in Philly like him. But see, he's bossy. He's pushy. He hates the analytics people, especially when it comes to evaluating college scouting. Alonzo Highsmith worked for him. He said, John's tough. He thinks the analytic guys are stupid. Highsmith's now up in, um, in New England. And I had a conversation about John Dorsey. And I had a conversation about how he built that Cleveland team up. He goes, man, I'm going to tell you, the owner, Jimmy Haslam, boy, did he. I mean, some of those meetings were just off the charts hollering. He was setting his way on how to bring this guy in, that guy in. He's the guy that drafted the tight end out of Miami. He's the guy that put that old line together. He's the guy that put that defense together. I mean... I don't think there's any coincidence that they brought Andrew Barry in, too, right after him. Another Philly guy who worked with Dorsey. Just better bedside manner. Okay? The best hire the Chiefs made was Steve Spagnola. Um, I think Andy, I think, you know, I, you know what? I love Angelo. You guys know I do, but I don't know. I I, I think Andy Reid has also been instrumental in that kid's development too. I think Andy's a better coach today than he was in Philly, and I think he's a different dude. But Spagnola clearly four Super Bowl wins. I mean, that guy's beating Brady in a Super Bowl with Eli. That undefeated, I think he beat the undefeated team, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, you know, no, uh, John, if I'm, if I'm the Minnesota Vikings tomorrow, I offer Kirk Cousins a contract and have him come back. 
He was on his way to having a career year. He was blowing the league away before he got injured. Where are you going? You're going to pay Justin Jefferson $30 million, right? And you're going to bring a rookie in for him? One of these Drake May guys? Good luck. Set your franchise back four years. I don't think there's a quarterback in this draft worth a shit. But there'll be four guys drafted in the first round. You wait and see. Hey, hey, quite frankly, I just don't see it. Hey, did C.J. Stroud shock me? Absolutely. Did Bryce Young? No, I thought he was a shrimp. I thought he was a – you know who he reminded me of? Charlie Ward. Phenomenal college football player. Just great. Charlie Ward was like, what was he? In the two years he started there, 24-1, and one, national title. But he was too small. Then he turned around and had a 13-year, something like that, NBA career. But he's smaller. Okay. Bo Nix, the elder statesman. So we get this when you draft Bo Nix. Was he 24, 25? So you draft him in three years, he's 28. By the time he gets to his second contract, he's 30. And you're starting the process of evaluating what you're gonna what you're gonna do or not. How did the hey, how did the Chris Winky thing work out? When Chris Winkie played all them years of basketball or baseball, it was. Then he went to Florida State and he was like 26 when he got drafted or some shit. Guy won the Heisman. Had a very mediocre NFL career. Because when you look at Bo Nix, that's who Bo Nix is. He's got no ceiling. That's what that guy is. Whatever you think of him, he ain't getting better. Okay, there, there's no development. When you draft a 21-year-old or you draft a 20-year-old kid and you get somebody like Mahomes who's young, you, 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 you have room to develop and grow bigger, stronger. That kid's a man already. Bo Nix, good luck. Dude, seriously, he's the guy... Instead of getting your NFL Players Association card, that guy should be getting his AARP card by the time he gets his second contract going. I don't know, man. Okay? I, I, I don't know. So, again, I haven't really answered the question. The Eagles, by May 2nd, have to decide what to do with Devontae Smith. Pick up the fifth year or extend him. What do you do? What's the priority list? It's got to be Redick. Before May 2nd, I have to have a decision on what I'm going to do with Bradbury and Redick. I've got to decide what I'm going to do. Because what I do is going to directly impact the defense and what I can do in free agency. And how he is not good in the draft at positions of need. You know, Tone said something um, earlier. Isn't it funny? Both sides of the football, the Eagles are very weak in the middle of your team. Hurts can't throw across the middle of the field, and in the middle of your defense, it's weak. I mean, teams, good teams beat you this way. All the great and all the great tough teams, quarterbacks throw across the middle of the field, and you got great linebacker play. Did we not see that? Even the Lions, who don't have the best secondary, their linebackers were making plays in the divisional game. Just saying, guys. Mel Reese is going to join us at 4:30. Okay. Sills, notice that the coaches leave Philly. They become great. Um, Yeah, because KJ, hey, KJ, that's because the coaches get to expand more with what their program should look like instead of being under the thumb of management. Jonathan Gannon coached circles around the coaching staff of the Eagles last year. This coach circles around him. 
Shane Steichen had a winning team in Indianapolis with Jim Irsay. I mean, the Jaguars had two winning seasons back-to-back. Traditionally, the Jaguars are picking in the top three every year of the draft. I mean, it's not the players that Howie keeps. It's the players that Howie lets go. No, man. It's the shit he misses. The corners and the linebackers. Okay? The corners and the linebackers and the wideouts you flop on. Edge rushers, too. Dude, okay, you know, some will go like this. Well, he landed on sweat. Yeah, but how about the numerous ones that he's just devoured the draft in or regurgitated some of these picks? His cornerback selection and how the, his analytics guys that pick on the talent, th- this Keely Ringo, you really think he's good? I haven't seen him yet where I went, oh, yeah. I kind of see some things, but he, there's no wow factor with him. Sidney Brown needs to have it slow up a bit. You might want to smoke a joint, kitten. You know, calm yourself down. You're too amped up. Eat a mushroom. You know, go to one of those uh, Aaron Rodgers mushroom tents. Calm yourself down, kid. Wrap up, too. Learn how to wrap up and put a kid on the ground. You know what I'm saying? So there's some there's something there because he's he's a hitter. But the guy needs to smoke a joint or something. Just or get on the hookah. Calm yourself, son. He's a he he looks there's something there. All these players that they've drafted the last couple of years, I think Cam Jurgens is a good ball player. Is he Isaac Sayamalo? Absolutely not. I think the kid Steen, I think he's a little light. Like Barrett and I say, he's a little light on his feet. I like to see him be a little bit more stout. Not a bad ball player. I'm not saying they're bad. Um, The Davis kid, he's exactly who I thought he is. He's a tree stump. Unfortunately, with talent. because he And he doesn't use it to the maximum. That's a terrible thing to say about a player. This, guy's, this guy does not play up to his ability. And so when I say that about him, those are facts. Watch this. You think Jordan Davis is you 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 think Jordan Davis has played up to his ability? I, I don't know. I don't think so. Carter, I got great hopes for. The Kobe Dean has been a bust in Philly so far. Why don't you say it? Well, I really don't know. Well, Jesus Christ, many guys. We're now going on this, the third year, and you haven't seen anything redeeming yet? Stop giving people the benefit of the doubt when they haven't given you a reason to give them the benefit of the doubt. I love how people just make shit up just to fit a narrative so that they can go, you know, you know, this is a telltale year for him. Telltale year? I mean, he hasn't shown you one redeeming thing that would make you think he could turn this thing around. Health-wise or ability-wise. Dean has to stay healthy? That's part of it. I mean, we'll see. If Dean, watch this. You know what's going to be crazy? Let's just put this out here. If Dean plays decent this coming year, people are going to go, see, Sills? Aren't you doing the same thing Phil, uh, Chris Sims does to Jalen Hurts that you'll be doing to me? See? To be a great NFL ball player, You've got to put seasons together where people look at you and go, man, I know what I'm getting with this guy every single time he steps on a football field. When that guy steps on the field, 
like, like here, let me give you this with Parsons. Let me give you this with Parsons here. Parsons, when I see um, Micah Parsons step on the field, here's what I see in his game. He's a complete player in many aspects of the passing game. He can rush. He can cover. He's a good tackler. How about in the run game? Suspect. I think he's light on his feet. I think he gets knocked off his feet. And I think he gets worn down by the end of the year with all the chip blocks that tight ends and tackles do on him. You know why he's a non-factor in the second half of the season? Because they don't move him around enough. I think what Dan Quinn started doing with Michael Parsons, it wasn't so much that they were looking for the weak link on the offensive line with Parsons. I think they were lining him up against the weakest guy on the team to give him a break so he's not getting chipped out there out wide. Look what it did to Josh Sweat when you didn't get any production out of Brandon Graham this year. Josh Sweat took a beating this year because Brandon Graham sucked. Okay, and they had no help from Nolan Smith or anybody out there, Derek Burnett early. They had no help for him. He was a one-man end. The year before, you had two guys with double-digit sacks and you had a guy on the outside with 16. Think about what Sweat had in 22. He had 27 sacks lining up on the other side, and Sweat had a double-digit year, too. Why? Well, who are you chipping? Are you chipping Reddick? Man, you got to keep an eye on Graham now. And this guy over here had more single one-on-ones. Well, when those guys became a non-factor, everybody started chipping Josh Sweat. You wear people out. Graham didn't suck. Graham was non-productive. Yale, he sucked. He gave you nothing. Nothing. The roster spot is needed. He's not worthy of being on a rebuild defense. Like, there's no reason to bring him back. You know, that's the one thing, again, that I love what New England did. It didn't matter what your name was on the back of the jersey. They made the tough cuts. They moved out from players when they still had something in the tank left. The Eagles wait until they have one little bit of gas left. Okay, at his age, that's not a reason to say that a guy was productive because he's an older player. That's not the tie-in I want. I want younger and cheaper and better. That's what I want. Not older, less productive, and good for his age. That's a free seat at the dinner table. Not happening. Got to make some tough decisions here. All right. We come back. We're going to talk with our friend Tone. Don't forget Merrill Reese at 430. And we're going to go over. I want to, I want to, I really do want to hear what Tone thinks about this May 2nd decision that the Eagles have to make on Devontae Smith. Do you pick the fifth year option up or do you extend him now? We'll hit on that. We'll talk a little bit about what Sims said. I'm not going to defend Sims. I, I think he just went about it the wrong way. He's not totally wrong. Did he clickbait it? Yes. Did he was he looking for the Philly response? Of course. We all know that. You guys are gonna blow up like Bill's Mafia does. I get it. Hit the like button, keep it here, National Football Show. Go for the pulse and the pools. Go for the ooze and the oz. Go for the bubbles and the bubbly. Go for the story and the stories. 
go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their Fantasy Pick'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday. Watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game. And the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Big Sales here. Appreciate you coming aboard. Thank you very much. Please hit the like button. Got to flat out tell you here. Let me throw this at you here. Um, do you think the Eagles want Jason Kelsey back? What level? Do you think they want him back? John says no. Forrest says, of course. It's a great question. Do I think they want Fred? Hey, let's go down the list here. Do they want him back? I think they want him back because Dave's like 50-50. Kind of a stupid question is that. Well, it's a money question. It's money. That's why anybody that makes a salary with two digits, like 10 million and north of that, and they're 38 years old, you have to have that conversation. You have to. I, I, I don't care who you are. You have to have the conversation. Like here, get this. I don't think the Eagles want Graham back. I'm wondering if they even want Fletcher back. Now, would I take Fletcher back at a cheaper price? Yes. Like $3 million. But could Fletcher get... The 10 million on the open market? I think he could. But should Philly pay 10? No. You defeat the purpose of drafting your two defensive tackles in the first round, don't you? Why did you draft your two tackles then? Right? You have to get more balance. On that side of the ball, defense, you have to. If you're going to be put back into a Super Bowl contender conversation, you're not trending in the right spot now. You're just not. Do you think they want him back? I think so. And I'm talking Jason Kelsey. 
I think they do. Here's two other questions. Will Howie pay for a running back? And what will he pay? Will he pay for a high draft? Hey, are you going to pay for a high draft pick? Or with a high draft pick? Or are you going to spend money with one of these guys that the market is pretty deep? And because the market's deep, that favors the Eagles. One of those guys is going to be at a premium price to buy. Who do you want to buy? Or how high will you go in the draft for a draft pick? What will you do? I think that's a decision that he has to contemplate. Okay? He, he's got to contemplate that decision. Do I spend a second or third round draft pick on a back? Or do I spend money on the back that I really don't have? Let's ask the same question at the linebacker position. What exactly is Howie going to pay for the LB position? A high draft pick? Or are you going to spend top dollar to get a guy in there? What are you going to do? How are you going to handle that? Brian goes, you don't have, and remember something, Brian, if you draft a running back, you better pray this guy understands pass protection. You're not drafting a running back and that offense just to be a guy to get you yards like Swift. You got to be able to protect Jalen Hurts on that blitz. And hey, they're going to be coming for you. Howie more apt to spend money or is he going to spend high equity picks on an LB. Let's do this one also before I bring Tone in. You think Howie makes any trades on draft day? Does he move up or down? Personally, at 22, I might move out of the first round and get as many twos and threes as I can. And give that guy as many chances to get successful. Because he's, what's he got, nine picks? I don't know. Let's bring our friend Tone in. Don't forget Merrill Reese is also with us at fourth. Big sales, how you feeling today, sir? All good. Um, <coughs> What'd you make of Chris Sims' comments? Listen, man. Here's the thing. You, I know you heard me earlier, man. I start, I started getting in his ass, man. But look, here's the thing. I look at it like this, right? And I think you and I spoke about this a while back. I'm a firm believer that there are there are a, 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 a subgroup, a subculture of sports people who quite literally couldn't wait for Jalen Hurst to slip. They couldn't wait for Jalen Hurst to have a setback because they wanted all the things they said about him pre-draft to be validated. Uh, to be validated throughout his football career. You know, Jalen Hurts, has he had the perfect start to the NFL? No. As of right now, are things perfect for him, you know, as it stands with the Philadelphia Eagles? No. But the way I see it, a guy who was drafted in the second round, a guy who, in my opinion, has exceeded anybody's expectation, even this year, you know, he had he had 20 turnovers this season. Unacceptable. I would never make an excuse for that at all. But I also look at it like this. He did give you 38 touchdowns. He did give you over 4,000 yards of total offense, right? He did get you to the playoffs. You know, the, the, the year prior, got you to a Super Bowl, played very well, still lost the game, though. You got to win it. The rookie year or the first year as a starter, I don't judge anybody by their first year. I'm very graceful to rookies or anybody who gets their first year starting. I'm very graceful to them. So for me... I just look at Chris Sims as a guy who's been living off of the lifeblood of not only his Jalen Hurts banter, but he's also been living off of the lifeblood of his own father. <laughs> look, man, 
I don't mean no disrespect. <laughs> He's great at what he does. But come on, man. At some point, somebody got to call it what it is. They were talking about Kyler Murray. All of a sudden, he found a way to whip in Jalen Hurts. You see what I'm saying there? He see, knows I don't. I I think Chris. I don't. I don't think he gives a shit. Of course he doesn't about Jalen Hurts. What I think he gives a shit about more is his take and his of position. Course. Of course, Jalen Hurts is just the vehicle for his opinions to be right. Exactly. And here's the thing: you say it all the time, "I'm." You're looking forward to being wrong. Yes, you absolutely. Want, I want you, this. You kid. you want you want your opinion to change. He he doesn't want his opinion to change. He doesn't. He I said the be, same thing. He wants to be validated. This. Lamar Jackson, after he took over for Flacco in Baltimore, I went like this. This guy's out of the league in five years. He can't hit the broadside of a barn. He, he Against that Charger team in the playoffs, he was atrocious. Yeah, he was bad. And I'm like, game. this guy sucks. Yeah. I think and the next the game? year's the MVP. Yeah. I and I'm like this. Holy shit. I couldn't have been more wrong about a guy. Right. And, and, and I think my problem with Phil Sims really is the fact that, damn, you can't give Jalen Hurts any credit? Any? Wow, he's the most overrated player in, in, in the league? <laughs> I wow. did not believe that. Come on, really? No. Really? The, the most overrated player in the league with what? How many How many people are in the NFL, Dan, right now? Give me a rough um, number. I think 1,500 people, 1,600 people are in the Jalen league. Jalen Hurts is the most overrated player out of 1,500 players? No. Come on, man. When every, when every week people have been killing him? Every chance they get, they, they they talk about the deficiencies in his game. There, so some people are so afraid to consider him a top ten quarterback. You know, it's it is what it is. I don't, I, I don't even want to spend too much time on him. The fact of the matter is, look, he's great at what he does, but he also sucked at what he did, and it, it is what I, it is. Here, here's here here. Look, we've seen three different Hertzes. You agree? Yeah, but again. Okay. First, I can't. I can't. All right. I don't want you to quantify it. I no, asked no, you, no, do, do you see three different Hertz's so far? How about this? I saw. I, I Have saw you two, seen enough? I saw, I saw two different Hertz's. Okay. Two different Hertz. Okay. I saw two. So then what do you know what you're looking at? I pay attention to the work ethic. I pay attention. I pay attention to the to the production. Right. Okay. Let's let, let's let's talk about it. And again. You know, I feel like every quarterback has that season in their career where they have more interceptions than they normally would. But again, you know, I just want to use facts instead of my feelings to validate what I'm saying. Because I think Jalen Hurts is a good quarterback. Do I think he's great? No. Do I think he has a lot to improve on? Absolutely. And the last thing I want to do is pretend like I didn't see the turbulence in 2023. I saw a guy who struggled. That's a fact. But I also saw a guy in 2023 and in 2022 who was completing 66% of his passes. I saw a guy who was averaging about 3,800 yards passing and about 650 yards rushing over the past two years. I see a guy who's averaging about eight yards in the tenth over the past two years. I see a guy who's put up north of 30 touchdowns over the past two years. You know, in 2020, respectively. In 2023, he put up 38 touchdowns. In 2022, he gave you 35 touchdowns. Um, in 2022, only turned the ball over six times. In 2023, he turned the ball over 19 times. Not a good look whatsoever. And I'm not excusing the turnovers, but I'm also not gonna not gonna ignore production. You know, you know, Jalen Hurts was a guy that they that they considered wouldn't be accurate at all. They thought he was a guy that would never be able to throw or complete 65, 66 percent of his passes. They thought he would be a habitual 60 percenter. They Let me ask that. something. What's the league average in completion percentage? Um, let me look it up for you right now. Give me one second. Because, let me see here. Got to dig deep. I'm curious to know what the league average is when it comes to completion percentage. Yale's convinced on Hertz. NFL league average. Let me double check here. Got to do a little digging. NFL league average. Completion percentage. There we go. All right. Season by season passing. All right. So, <clears throat> in 2023... The league average was 64.5%. So he's about average of the league. At, at, at 66%, 65%. Yeah, just above. above average. Yeah, Little just above, above average. Um, as, as, far, as, as far as the yards, the average yardage in the 2023 season was 218 yards. 
in 2023. Was he at 204? In 2023, he averaged. Give me one moment here. I think it's like 204, something like that. Let's see here. In 2023, Jalen Hurts averaged 200. Where is it? It's, it, there, there's no question. There's no question of turnovers. Here it is. He averaged he averaged 226 yards per game. Okay. So, so above above average. league average. So. When it comes to completion percentage, he was above league average. When it comes to yards per game, he was above league average. Okay. I mean, he had a bad year. He turned the ball over. I'm not making excuses for that. I when know. it comes to, you know, when it comes to his passer rating um, in 2023, it was 89.1. So the you're league- a stout defender still of Hurts being a guy who is going to take this team back to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I am. All right. I am. I, 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 am. I had someone ask me this question earlier. What's the ceiling? At his current rate, with what they want him to do with the hiring of Kellen Moore, 15 years, 14 years, I think they'll be in the playoffs. I don't think they'll ever get back to the play of the Super Bowl, not with that style of play. Um, now, if you give me 22, it's about a 10-year career, 11, something like that, three Super Bowl appearances. Maybe you get one. That's my take on him. That's my ceiling. If you're telling me the 23 is going to be what he's going to look like the rest of the way out in his career, you ain't getting back there, dude, because you ain't proven to me you can. And again, you're going to go, well, Seals, it's one year playing like that. I know. Yeah, I mean, that's an opinion. Look, ultimately, so far, what he's done in that one year. I didn't see anything that made me believe that he's going to take a team to a Super Bowl. Look, all you can do is go off. I did. Of, all you can do is go off what you're seeing, right? That's all you can 22, do. Twenty-two. I did. All you, can, all you can do is go off of what he put on tape. Um, he's get, he has a very a very small sample size of production. That's all you can go off of, right? Let me ask you this question: Do you think Jalen Hurts is going to turn the ball over twenty times again next season? No, let me put it to you. Let me put it to you this no, way. but I do think there's going to be a good chance of high turnovers, and I'll tell you why. Kelsey's a factor. If that he's matters. Not back. Who's blocking in the backfield with your backs picking up blitzes? You think that's that that rate is going to stop? It's not. He's going to be under center, which means this: he's not going to have the same time to process, and he's not. When you're under center. You've got to get back immediately. Is his footwork great? Eh, suspect at times. Sometimes he's got great feet. He's yeah, got I agree a lot with of that. work to do there. I agree with that. Okay. So when you're asking him to do some things that he's not done if you're going to put him under center, too. Now you're putting the element back of you're putting an element back of surprise when you put him under center, like we said last week. Right. However, um Kellen Moore's last two stops had no impact on developing a quarterback. Dak led the NFL in picks. Herbert wasn't great last year. Now he got hurt. We don't know what that could. Plus, Staley's a horrific coach. So they had just as much chaos in that building as I think the Eagles did when it came to their coaching and their their chaos. But to sit here and go like this, Kellen Moore is going to turn the guy around when in the last two years I haven't seen him do anything for a quarterback yet. I, I just I think Herbert's going to be in line for an MVP uh, candidate because of Harbaugh in the room. So when it comes to Kellen Moore, right, and ultimately, and I don't know. No, yeah, of course, of course. You know, neither of us know. You know, I can only I, I can only go by so far on my takes, and you know, likewise with you. Um, as far as Kellen Moore goes, and when it comes to developing a quarterback and working with a quarterback, I mean, granted, I do understand that in 2022. Dak Prescott had 15 turnovers in 12 games played. Um, that's unacceptable as well. Also, and, and look, this the last thing I thought I would do is be defending Dak Prescott. That's the last thing I thought I would be doing on this show. But I'm only doing this, you know, in order to validate uh, Kellen Moore's time um, in Dallas. 
So Kellen Moore was the uh, was the OC there, I believe, for five seasons, four or five seasons. I think so. Um, Sounds right. Uh, he so he basically was there from 2022, 2021, 2020, 2019, 2018, right? Under Kellen Moore in 2018, Dak Prescott. And again, I know he's him and Hurts played a position differently, but I just want to talk about the growth that Dick Prescott's experience under Kellen Moore completed 67% of his passes, which is up from 2017. In 2017, he only completed 62%. When Kellen Moore got there, that jumped to 67%. His yards in 2017 was 3,324. That jumped to 3,885. What year is this? 2018. Okay. I is that, and that's the year Amari got there. Uh, is it? I'm not entirely sure. Okay, go All ahead. Right, I, I, I can double check it, though. Let me see. Because Dak had a career year this past season without him. Right. I agree. But I also think Dak has, you know, I think he's matured. And, and, yep. and also, Kellen yep. Moore got better, too. Yep, yep. Okay, yeah. So, in 2018... Yes, 2018, Amari Cooper got there. He was traded. Was it midseason? It looks like midseason. Yes. Yeah, yeah. he was traded there midseason. He spent six games in Oakland and then nine games in Dallas. Yep. Um. So, yeah, where was I? Uh, so, in 20, uh, 2018, uh, yeah, his Dak percentage, put, his completion percentage went up, I think, because Amari got there. It's, fa- it's, 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 it's fair enough, but you got to maintain it, right? Yeah. So, in 2019, um, 16 games played. 65% completion percentage under Kellen Moore, 4,900 passing yards, 30 passing touchdowns, only 11 interceptions. Great year. Um, 20, 2020, he had the injury where he only played five games, obviously. Yep. Um, 2021, 68% completion percentage. CD, CD's there. 4,400 passing yards, 37 passing touchdowns, you know, 10, 10 interceptions. I mean, he's had it. He's he's shown an ability to keep a quarterback playing if at a pretty keep high that level. Interception thing around 10 to 12, 13 in there. I'm good with that. Me too. If you're over 4,500 yards passing, I'm good with that. Yeah, five or six hundred attempts. Yeah, yeah. Because for me, it's all about your ratio, right? I don't want Jalen Hurts. Absolutely at a, correct. Yeah, I don't want Jalen Hurts at a two to one ratio. No, I it, need like the year that Brady and everyone says he sucked. He threw the ball 702 times. The he most had nine the, picks. The most ever we've ever we've never seen a quarterback yeah. throw the ball. And that he had nine times. interceptions that year. People went like this. He sucked. I'm like. No, you he threw didn't. the ball 700 times. And threw nine interceptions. And only. threw nine picks that year, and they sucked. I'm like, I don't think so. Right. So, again, you know, Jalen Hurts, I look at it like this, man. You know, I'm 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 a Jalen Hurts guy. I've never really been shy about that, but I've also never been shy about criticizing him as well. I think, I think at this point you can tell I'm pretty fair. I try to be fair about Jalen Hurts. I have no problem criticizing the missteps. I have no problem criticizing the failures. But I guess what I don't like is when people – are so dismissive of the strides and the distance he's traveled to the point where they're willing, to the point where they're willing to call him overrated. That's when a guy when a guy in his rookie yeah. year, like you know, let's let's just let's just call it what he's, it is. I mean, not overrated, of course not. But let's but but again, we're we're, we're humoring it, right? Twenty twenty, Jalen Hurts completed fifty two percent of his passes through four games played. In twenty twenty one, completed sixty one percent of his passes through fifteen games played. In twenty twenty two, completed sixty six percent of his passes. And in 2023, completed 65% of his passes. I mean, every year he's produced more and more and more and more. Did he have a year where he turned the ball over more than normal? But I also think there was a lot of circumstances involved. Nonetheless, though, he made those decisions. He fumbled the rock. He has to control that. And that's on him at the end of the day. He, he was not a good decision maker in 2023. That's a fact. But when I look at the production, I see a guy that's produced more and more and more every single year. Did he have a setback? Sure. But ultimately, and it's the NFL, baby. Guys are going to catch up to what you're doing, and you got to react. Read and react. You know this game, Dan. <laughs> Read and react. I like it. Okay, let's get to this thing now. You know, not a lot of people hitting on it. This is the first time we have. Yes. Um, The Eagles have a big decision to make here by May 2nd. Mm-hmm. If they're going to pick up Devontae Smith's fifth-year option. Oh, yeah. That means that in 2025, the base will go to 15 million. Should the Eagles extend Smith this offseason or wait? You know how he loves to get in the room early. Dude, and I gotta tell you, I've gone back and forth on this. I I don't like to do that. I don't like to I know. be on the fence. You're very you like to, you like to, you like to be on whatever I side you're on. That. I know, okay. and I can tell. I can tell when you when it bothers you. Like, it's, you know, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm going. I'm like, man, 
I want, I need the time, but I don't want this kid. All of a sudden, Landon Dickerson, him, Devontae, I'm paying a bunch of dudes. Josh Sweat, I got to decide on $20 million contracts. Jesus, Tone, I don't want to be, de- I don't want to be dealing with three $20 million contracts. Yeah, here, here's the thing. I think the Eagles, because you bring up a very good point with Devontae. If you pick up the fifth, if you pick up the uh the fifth year option, that 15.5 million goes right in your cap. Right, right at it. So if they're trying to avoid the cap headache, they have to. This may sound crazy to people, but I need you to follow me. And in order for them to avoid the massive cap hit in 2025, when they pick if if they were to pick up the fifth year option. They actually had to decline the fifth year option, then extend them from there. M- meaning, to your point, they need to pay him now. Okay, because they need to pay him now because if they don't pick that option out, he's a free agent next off season. Correct. No. Correct. 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 Because that so, option, so, yeah. Right. So to your point, so he'll be the- playing his final year on May second. Right. If they don't extend, they don't pick that thing up. Right, they're going to have to. This pick is it. his last year in Philly. Right, if they don't pick it up, and they plan on keeping him, they got to pay him again. I'm thinking about the. I'm thinking about the books, right? I'm all about picking up the fifth year option, but I'm also thinking about the cap hit that's going to have. So they, if they're if they're worried about the cap hit, they're going to have to find a way to restructure the extension with that fifth year option, if that's even a possibility. Because I think Devontae should be here. I'm not implying they should think about moving him. Never that. I'm a Devontae guy. Me personally, and again, this is just me personally, I would buy a Devontae jersey before an A.J. Brown jersey. That's just me, though. But nonetheless. If you, if you pick the option up, you got two years to deal with. You're, right, you, you, pick, you have you have the two. You have this year and 25. If right. you don't, so what are you going to pay him then if you want to extend him now? So here's the thing. As of right now, his current market value stands at $19.9 million per season, which is – quite frankly, the franchise tag. So what they're going to have to do is um, that's when I think I think you have to cut Avante Maddox. I think Avante Maddox is cut. I'm not, I'm, I'm not keeping his contract on the books. That can free up okay. about $9 million on your cap. Buyer gives you another 13 Buyer gives you another 13 That's 22. $22 million right there that you just freed up on top of the money you already have. So, again. What do you do with Reddick? I'm going to make him an offer. Reddick Reddick gets you the money you need for him. Listen, I'm going to make him an offer. And I'm going to say, listen, this is, this is what we're trying to do. <laughs> You're going to lowball willing, a guy who gave you 30 sacks. I'm not going to lowball him. I'm going to give right. him a fair offer. But it's, remember, remember, it's all about that base. Hey, hey Don Cor- oh, it is. It's all Don about that Corleone. base. So this is what I'm saying to you. you an offer Reddick. I can't refuse? I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. Who's going, who's going, to, who's going to deny $25 plus million up front? Who's going to deny that? In your pocket. You played this game. Money in your pocket is better than money that's on the, uh, on the books, right? So, again, I think in order to free up that cap space that Reddick's contract is holding up, if they want to keep him and if he and if they work something, they, they got to they gotta extend him. If they don't, they got to trade him and get the money off. They got to make a decision. To your point, time is wasting. So whatever move they make, it has to free up that $21 million on the cap. They got, they got to relieve pressure right there. But the which bottom line is, which guy do you think on that defense, or which guy do you think on that roster is going to determine Smith's future when it comes to what they do? Look, Smith's future is in Philly; they want him, and mm-hmm. so does everyone else. But there's, it's either Reddick or do you think it's Bradbury that is mm-hmm. going to determine? Because That's I'll tell question. you what I would do, Tone, to get to maybe get a little less money on my on my cap too. And I'm glad to see it's 243 and it's two, instead of 239 or 240. Mm-hmm. So that gives them roughly around three and a half more. So that's 26 to 27 million. So you're getting up there a little more. Bayard being out, 36. You're starting to climb back up there as you're getting closer to the draft. I would do this with Bradbury. I would look for a trade partner, pick up half the contract, mm. get half the half the salary off the books. I get a roster spot, and I get a draft pick. I go into the draft, and I get a rookie. Or I get Jalen Johnson and give money to Jalen Johnson because tomorrow we're going to find out if the Bears are going to tag his ass. 
Snead, mm. I think, is going to get tagged in Kansas City. It's a chance. You know, me and Rob was talking about that. Like, could they eat? Are you going to tag Chris Jones or are you going to tag LeJarrus Le Le Snead? Who are you going to do? That's a good question because I don't know if they can keep both. They can't. They can't keep both. I don't know if they can. I really they got don't think they can. $23 million, I believe, in cap space. Okay? He's going to command 31, but he's 29. Okay? Yeah, are you going to tag situation. him? Or are you going to tag Snead? I think you tag Snead, the younger guy, and he is, he is younger. you move on. I'm glad I'm not with them. That's a tough situation. Legereus Snead is a young guy, 27 years old, entering his prime right now, or maybe in it right now. Uh, a guy, but the thing about that Chris Snead, Jones, kid's a bitch, though, man. I know, I know. He literally wrecked the Super Bowl. He, he that he um, had one of the biggest plays in the game that fourth quarter game fourth quarter play where right. they didn't block him. I'll put it to you this way. Put it to you this way. You and I talk about this all the time. You build your team from the inside out. Yep, yeah, that's right. But that, but what do you they say show, all the time about them premium positions like corner? That's true, and that's and that's and that's the rub, right? That's the rub right there. So I'm torn in that situation. Um, I'll put it to you this way. I'm going to go with the tried and true formula. Build your team from the inside out. You build your team from the inside out and trust that what you've done previously with drafting DBs and developing them and spags, trust that he can coach up whoever's back there. Or offer him a contract that is offer re restruct. Can you restructure Mahomes again? They just signed him to a new extension. They just signed him to a new one. Can they do that? I, listen, I know they did this when they gave him the first initial $500, $500 million deal. Mm -hmm. Within a month, so they could get Orlando Brown in the room, they 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 restructured the contract, gave Brown the money, put him on the team. I think he came over from Cleveland. Does that sound right? Uh, or Baltimore? No, he came from Baltimore. Baltimore. Came over from Baltimore, and they put him in the building because Mahomes restructured the contract. He's, and the crazy thing is, though, he's not even there anymore. They got rid of him like a year later. They Two did. He's in Cleveland now, I think. Right, right. Um, but to your point about the Eagle situation, um, I think Devontae Smith, if they want to get ahead of the market, Howie Roseman is, is notorious for paying guys early. Um, if he wants to get ahead of this thing, I think they got to – and look, I'm not a capologist. It's a tough one. It's a tough look, call here. Yeah. Look, I'm not a capologist, right? I'm still understand. I'm still understanding the science of it. I want to. Be, I want to be very transparent about that. So three years, I'll, three thousand yards receiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, listen, man. Three years, over three thousand yards receiving, nineteen touchdowns over the past three seasons, averaged thirteen yards of reception, averaging um, over seventy five catches a year. Exactly, exactly. You know, you can't. You you, you can't. They're not going to let him walk out the door. That's not happening. He's going. He's going to get paid somehow, some way. Again. Um, I think Howie and the cap hits might the, afford you it, it's the about ability the to hits. keep both them guys. See, I think this is AJ Brown. You know how you were saying next year's the year you really look at that. I think next, I think he's playing in Philly one more year. It's a, it's a strong possibility, and a lot of people don't want to really acknowledge that simple that, that simple notion. But at the end of the day, they have so much money tied up on the offense side of the ball. If you want to get that defense, and here's another thing that people overlook when you talk about one aspect of the team. When you're talking about Devontae Smith and Landon Dickerson and all those guys, Jordan Milata's contract is going to be coming up soon. When you talk about all those guys, you also got to say, my defense. I got to put some money over there as well. So this is where we start to look at Jalen Hurts and say, look, we're going to have to take a piece away from you. You're going to have to step your weight up. You're going to have to prove guys like Chris Sims wrong. OK, you're going to have to prove guys like Tone DeShields right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think I, I think Devontae Smith is I think Devontae Smith is their guy. I think he's Howie's got to look at Jalen and go, hey, I don't want to look at my owner and have to explain 20 turnovers again. Flat out. Flat out. Um, I don't think he does that again. But overall, it always come back to the money at the end of the day. And the money says they got to move. Bradbury out the building. I'm sorry. Bradbury got to go. Hassan Reddick is either you take this extension that we're offering or we're trading you. It's very simple. Are you giving them more? I'm giving I'm giving them a little bit more. A little bit more. 
But I'm not giving him 20. I'm not giving him 20. Because there's the $20 million guy at Von Miller and Trey Hendrickson, and then there's a big drop-off to like a $16 or $17 million guy, right? I'm looking at Hassan Ruddick and say, look, I'm willing to give you somewhere in between there. I don't think you're a $20 million guy, but I definitely believe that you deserve a little bit more cash. So he right now he's at 15. Listen, Hassan, I'm willing to push it to 17 and a half, maybe. But other than that, if you're trying to, if it, you're not, you're not going to hamstring me. I'm just not. Here's here's the problem, and Yale's right. Here's the problem you have to concern yourself with, Tone. The things that you hired him to do, and the reason you signed him mm -hmm. was to improve your pass rush from the uh, to 2020 season. Right. What you don't want to do is, hey, I did everything that you asked me to do, everything, and you're going to come in here with a with a two million dollar um, raise. That's why it's important to find out what he found out on that open market. We're going to know all of this very soon. You Remember, think that's the insulting that you're telling. Hey, go find out and see what your value is. When the people in the building should know what they have their own internal value on you are is Insul insulting. This is. I didn't draft you. This is business. What do I owe? Oh, you? Okay, I, you're you're not wrong. Insulting? I no, feel like it's. I, I, feel, it. I feel like hey, it's more insulting. This? You know how the team fires back? You think it's insulting that we signed you? No one else was going to give you 15 a year. You know we're the one that gambled. I didn't see a lot of teams giving you 15 million dollars to sign. You were cut. Remember that? That was no trade. Carolina right. let him walk. Let him walk out the door. Okay, two teams. You don't let you premium pass rushers walk out the door, Tone, in two places, right? Unless there's a problem, like and, and and again, right? This ain't this ain't got nothing to do with feelings. This is me thinking about the cap, the roster, and trying to and, and trying to rebuild this defense. This defense needs a lot of work, a lot. And I'm not and and, I, and I'm not going to undersell that. And I'm not and I'm not going to placate to anybody to make it seem like. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna get there faster than what we think, you guys. Don't worry, it's not that bad. No, this shit is bad, and a lot of stuff needs to get handled. That defense has to be addressed. It has to be addressed. It has to be addressed. And also, I look at it like this too, right? You got Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, and those guys in that middle. Josh Sweat. Those guys got to step up. You can't have listen. You can't. Everybody on your line can't be premium. It's the reality. Some guys gonna have to. Some guys are gonna have to play above their pay grade. This is the NFL. You know what I'm saying? Some you can't have all pros and pro bowls at every position. We were you see, we were spoiled last year or in 2022. We were spoiled. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't have all those premier guys at that one position. Sacks. It's it's not it's not realistic. I mean that's not even realistic. It's 70 not. sacks. So uh, you know, I look at it it's like clearly this. one of the best Super Bowl rosters I've ever seen. One of, one of the best that couldn't get it done. You know, you know what I would say? That that 2022 and that um, undefeated Patriots team, that's two of the best rosters I've seen in the past 20 years. That and I would done. even say that this 49er roster that was in that Super Bowl against yeah. the Kansas City Chiefs. Yep, I'll tell you that's just as much of a letdown as the Eagle letdown was because you got all them high price guys. You're right. only five hundred thousand dollars over the cap. Hey, I mean uh, under the cap. Listen here, man. It's tight. It's hey, tight. You guys have a lot of decision making to do. Exactly. Yeah, Brandon Ayuk so, to decide on. Exactly. So again, you know, we marry ourselves to these players without thinking about the repercussions of maintaining them on the roster. And then when you say, "Listen, they may have to consider consider moving on from him." No, you're crazy. You're a psycho. Why would you move on from Hassan Reddick? He's your best defensive player. Okay, but the def what difference did he make last year? When we needed, when, when we needed, and look, a lot of things happen. Matt, Patricia, all that kind of stuff. Nothing is ever as simple as we make it. But overall, I'm looking at the bigger picture when it comes to this defense, not just one guy's Peyton, not not just one guy's pocket. I'm looking at the bigger picture, and I'm making him once he comes back from whatever finding out what what, what the market tells him. We're going to talk about it again, and this is what it's going to be. If you don't like it, but then we're going to have to move on from you, and it is what it is. Who was that some, guy that was on earlier? Uh, that was our guy Dave Zangaro from NBC Sports Philly. Okay, so he works with uh, Big Barrett. Yes, yes, correct. Man, you were going somewhere so good, and 
You didn't stay at it. I know time. Time. I, no, you didn't stay on it because you didn't stay there on it. Because when he said, you know, they've kind of limited Nick with all these coordinator hires. And then I started as soon as before he even said it, then you kind of broached it. I said it, I said it, I'm sitting here watching it going, why are they protecting Nick? You heard me, right? I said, I said, are, are they hiding him? What did I, what did I write down here? I said, protecting him. I said, what is Eagle management protecting him by hiring these, these experienced OCs and DCs and not giving him a job title so that when someone comes up and that guy, what's his name? Dave, what? Zingaro. He said this, he goes, what is going to be the metric to measure him by just wins and losses? Is that all the Eagles want? Because that's what everybody brings up on why he should have kept his job because of the 667. That's the only thing they bring up. So is that his? If that's the case, they're either doing this. They're setting him up for failure. Or if this thing, because this thing doesn't turn around, his job is going to determine by how many wins they get. Exactly, which is, which is why if they I, have an under 500 record. He's gone. Which is why I said, by what is when is the trade down normally? Week eight, week nine, something, something like, like right in the yeah eight something nine because right a buy usually in there a league buy. If the if the Eagles are under 500 by that point, he's out. How about if they're 500 at that point? So that would mean they're what four and four, something like that, something like that. I still think he's gone. I think he's gone. They need to be, or I'll put it to you this way. We always talk about what it would be if he gets fired. In order for him to keep his job, I think they only they're on they can only be afforded maybe two losses. By the by the by the bot, uh by the halfway point of the sea or the trading deadline. They gotta be six and two. Or even six and three. I think it's gonna be very interesting to see what when they get their uh bye week. If it's in the middle of the week. We're going to know that that's going to be a, or middle of the schedule. That's going to be an evaluation period. Because again, you're only, you can't gauge them off of the flow of the offense anymore. You can't gauge them over the defense. Obviously you never have. You only, if you're only gauging him off of wins and losses, you can't develop, you can't gauge him off of Jalen's development. That's in someone else's hands. Exactly. So if, so again, all you can really gauge him on is it's the win column off. and the lose and the loss column. If he's 500 or less, I will not be surprised if he gets axed. And then Kellen Moore takes over as the interim head coach. And then he, because he's already running the offense, it's the perfect, it's, it's, it's a seamless transition. Seamless. They're hedging their bet like they always do. Yep, that's exactly what this is coming down to. Get this. I've never, you know, Mike McCarthy's not just being engaged on wins and losses. He's being engaged on the fact that they gave um, Dak Prescott a career year. Mm -hmm. That's why he's back also. Yes, I believe that as well. I believe that. Um, I think I, I think McCarthy, believe it or not, he's in a safer position than Nick Sirianni. Oh, by far. Because the head coach, I mean, because the owner came out and because it's my guy. We never had any thought of firing him. Right. He's my guy. It was right at. It was like three days after he goes. This is my guy. We had no intention of getting rid of right. him or moving off. I've never. I heard what's his name asked the question when he was at the little powwow thing, the little soiree they had, when Howie and his boy were sitting there taking questions. What's your? I mean, head coach being asked, "What's your job?" Holy cow! It looked like a funeral. It looked like a funeral. Like there wasn't, in my opinion, I didn't, I didn't get a feel or a sense of this, this unwavering. <laughs> I thought this, it felt like he was on trial. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get a sense for this unwavering conviction. I didn't. I got a sense for a guy that, because think about all he kept saying. Listen, you know, when a guy wins this many games, you know, you can't, you can't let him walk out the door. That's all that. That's all he kept talking about was the games. And he you notice about, that's kind of what that guy Dave said earlier today. He goes, you know, what's he gonna, what's gonna be the metric? paraphrasing here on how you're going to evaluate him. It's funny now that Howie said the same thing at that press conference. You can't fire a guy with that kind of wins and losses. So what they've done is they've taken all responsibility away of developing any players mm -hmm. and said, Nick, you're going to be gauged on how this team wins and loses. And that's the only metric. 
And that's that's pretty frightening. That's very frightening because a lot can happen. That right? means you have no job security. Right. A player can drop the ball. Um, a fumble can happen. You know, there are so many things that can happen in a football. You played this game. So many things can happen in the middle of a game. Injury. That right. Injury. And it's not your coach's fault. There's so, so what much if Jalen gets hurt, misses like five games, and they're two and f- they're and they're one and f- one and six? That's a good question. I can't even begin to think that far ahead. <laughs> I don't. If I don't want to think. Like well, that. I mean, if he's gauged by wins and losses, <laughs> to your point, and yeah, hurt right. misses some time, you're right. And he's one and six. You're right, man. Listen, he better make sure everybody eat their Wheaties. He better make. He better make sure the Gatorade is nice and full. No, no cramps. <laughs> now, how about this? Does that make him? What do you mean, Mido? Okay. Anyway, what the, the hey? Does that mean <laughs> that they're going to oh. be more cautious and protective of Hurts this year? Mm, you what do you mean? Nick's job is determining on that guy's health. Pretty much. So wait. Also, oh, are you implying RPO that... stuff? Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, I don't want to put this guy's ass in a position where. I see what you're doing. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, hey, I need him out there. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Because Hurts is success this year is going to be collateral damage for Nick if they lose. Mm. And this is why he's going to get the shrap medal. And this is why I feel like this situation is doomed for disaster. Yeah, totally. Because you cannot fire a, a coach's entire staff and keep him and think we're not going to have questions. What what have you ever seen that before? Where they fired no. a guy's whole staff and he stayed? No. And they brought in and they brought in more people around him that they brought in people around him that had I've more seen experience. Staff than stay and head coaches fired. Yes, we've seen that. We just saw the opposite happen. Yeah. Now they let him keep one guy, Kevin Patulo, yeah. one guy. But other than that, for the most part, they off his entire staff. Remember when what's his name? Jason Garrett got fired in Dallas. They kept Kellen Moore. They kept Kellen Moore. They kept Kellen Moore. They didn't and, fire the OC. And they McCarthy there. And McCarthy inherited Kellen Moore. And then Correct. you know, the, and then the rumors came out about Kellen Moore and McCarthy not really being on the same page. And then that's when Kellen Moore left. So I don't think Nick Sirianni is in an optimal position for his career. He's not because because ultimately he's been engaged on once or two, on two simple metrics: wins and losses. And that, my friend. Is a very is very shaky ground to be on. Very shaky. Here's one for you. Concerns Howie. How much is Howie gonna pay for a running back? Is it gonna be cash or is it gonna be draft capital? Mm. Are they gonna spend a high draft pick for a running back? Or are they gonna spend a lot of money. Now here, I can't just have a guy not just replace DeAndre Swift in his numbers. Right. I need a guy who, if we're going to have a player back there, can block as well. So that usually comes with experience. What will how? What was that thing you were saying about how he has to be different this all season? How we Roseman, were talking about he's got to be like do something different. He has to buck his trend. He has okay. to buck his trend. He can't. He can't. He can't approach it. He can't approach it the same exact way he normally does. He can't. What do you do here with the running back position? So, to your point, I think pass protection from that running back position is almost more important than whatever production they provide, because the running back position gave you nothing in pass protection over the past couple of years. It really did. Um, more, but more notably in twenty twenty three. Um, if I'm thinking about the way the market is set up and the way teams and organizations lead wide view the position, I wouldn't be surprised if they sign a guy and draft the guy. I think they may do because they only have they only really they really only have like one running back on the roster that's that we that, that we know of. Um, other than that, they they they're gonna have to either they're gonna have to pay a guy and maybe draft a guy, maybe fifth round, something like that, fourth or fifth round. To what I don't see Derek Henry's number. He was at four and a half million last week. It's at ten million now. Well, you, I, you, I, I you and I were just talking about this. We've been talking about it for the past well, couple well, weeks. What happened over the weekend? I have no idea what happened. It jumped astronomically. 
I wonder if he took a physical and passed it around to um and and his agent has been going around going that he took a physical and he's top health Still. right now. Still. The healthy yes. he's been the off season in any year in the last five years. I had to be so because it has to be something with his health. Sills, that jump is yeah. not normal. No, I had never seen you that. Know, you know, it was jump, three days. Right. To, all right. If, if it was four million, then it jumped to six. Okay. All right. That's one thing. It jumped a it jumped from four. Barb, million, I think it's a fitness issue. It jumped from four million to almost eleven million. Has to be. That's insane. Yeah, and the market. There's so many players on it. Why would yours go up six million? Correct. Correct. I mean, there's there's younger players on it. Why is yours up there? I mean, you're 30 years old. Right. Josh, listen, Josh Jacobs and Derrick Henry have the same market values at 10 million. Derrick Henry is at 10.3. Josh Jacobs is at 10.6. Josh Jacobs is only 26 years old. Derrick Henry's 30. How did that what is it because the projections went up four million for the cap? Did the cap change that? Saquon Barkley's the cap changed it. It's the cap that's a possibility. Changed it. That's the that's the only thing that's significant happened over the weekend. It went from two thirty nine to two forty three. Did the official franchise tax come out too? Yes. Well, well, I think that comes. I think the I think the NFL Players Association. We're gonna know that tomorrow because tomorrow's tag day. So okay. the NFL PA will release it, but the projections. If you go to the NFL Players Association, they kind of have projections. Tomorrow's official tag day. Okay. The numbers for each position will come out tomorrow. As a matter of fact, now I think about it. Okay, so yeah, so mostly every so DeAndre Swift, Austin Eckler, Tony Powell. They all went up, didn't all, they? All those guys are in the same range. Six six between six and seven million. What's what's number now? Six point seven. I think it was six point five at one point, right? Yeah. So it his went up a little bit, but Derrick Henry is the biggest jump I've ever seen. Has to be something with his fitness. Has to be health wise. It's, it's the only it's, and the and and the and the um yeah. cap going up has to be a combination. Yeah, because right now that that narrative that we talked about making a move for him is out the window. Let me That's say not, this to you. Oh yeah, completely out. He's not. He, I mean, but 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 I would say this: What teams out there going to pay him ten with a big quarterback? That's a contender. You think the Bills would do that? The rumor is they're forty-four the rumor million is, under the. They're forty-four over. The rumor is the Ravens and the Eagles are supposed to be the top landing spots. That's what that's what I'm hearing. But I don't believe the Eagles won not one bit. I'm paying ten. Then they're again, not paying ten million. I'll tell you what, man. He's a. He, it's the money. It's too much. It's too much. It's too because much. Then, and then, then we go back to this. You're gonna pay him ten. You got Devontae's decision to be made. You got Hassan's decision to be made. Your two corners. But here's another thing as well. Pay your rookies. Here's another thing that I think that we need to consider as well. Because of the nature of the position and because these teams have no problem drafting a running back and getting production out of them, whatever we see for running backs as far as estimated market value, and because there's so many of them on the market, I wouldn't be surprised if all those guys get maybe two or three million less than the estimated average. So, for example, they got Derrick Henry at 10 right now. I wouldn't be surprised if Derrick Henry actually gets maybe eight. They got Austin Eckler at 7.5 or 7.4. I wouldn't be surprised if Austin gets maybe six. You think he'd sign a one-year deal, Henry? That's a good question. I think it depends on the situation. Behind that old line, he get 15, 1,600 yards. If Swift can do that, Henry's a 10 times better player than Swift. Yeah, easily. If First of all, Derrick Henry's never had an old line the whole time he's been in the NFL. Ever. They're all Never. Worst ever. Never. And he's, no. he's, he's done what he's done. Kelly Green's got a good call here. Let's see. Saints here. are a billion dollars over the cap. A what? Oh no! What I'm saying, you know, I, I'm the figure of speech. They're like a, they're so far like sixty-seven million over the cap. What if they cut Camara? He's a twenty million dollar guy or seventeen million dollar guy. Thanks. They that's, may that's, cut his ass. Plus, with all point. that shit that went on last year. That's a good point. That's, this running back market is about to be maybe the largest we've seen in a while. Hey, more the merrier. Drops the number. The more the merrier. It's a buyer's market. The more houses on the block, the less. That's right. The, the less the less they cost. That's right. How about this one here? What will Howie spend at the linebacker position? High draft pick. I think 
high draft pick or big money? He needs to. He, I'm gonna be honest with you. He needs a veteran in there. He needs somebody to know what they're doing. I I can't waste time on the draft pick at linebacker. I can't. Maybe you draft a guy to develop him, maybe, but I can't waste time. I need to get a free agent. I need you to go get somebody legit. I heard Andrew Van Ginkle may be an option. He played for the Dolphins under Fangio. Um, had one of his better years under him. Um, you and I discussed Willie Gay. Uh, who else could potentially be available? And, and, and Gay could be a casualty of what's going on between Jones and Sneed. Uh, who else we got here? You got uh, you got Josie Jewell, who played for – where are we? He played for Don't the Broncos. you got to hang between four and five and a half million. You can't get over that because I don't – unless he's going to change his mentality. Because, listen, you, there's this guy. in their four and the five range. Listen, there's this guy. His name is Josie Jewell, played for the Broncos, five-year pro, drafted in the fourth round, went to Iowa. Um, his estimated market value is $7.6 million per year. He could be an option. Uh, man, I wouldn't be, this, 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 this is, this is going to be tough. It's going to be tough because again, it's all about the money you got left. How you're going to allocate it, who you're going to restructure. I think they need to go better in that linebacker. Yeah. Not that rubber duck named the Kobe Dean. Um, Hey, final question for you. We're going to get yes. um, <clears throat> our friend Merrill Reese on. Yes. Do the Eagles need to draft a quarterback or sign a veteran one? A quarterback or cornerback? Quarterback. Quarter. Behind Hurts. Oh, that's a good question. Because Mar Mariota's contract voids, I think, on Thursday or Wednesday? Yeah, something, something like that. that. It, voids, it voids this week. I want a veteran behind him. I don't think he brought anything to the team. At all. Not, not, not even – Conversation on the sideline with Hurts. Yeah. Not even, I felt yeah. better with Minshew back there. Right. It's insane. Um, see, the veteran quarterback market is very slim. Very slim. I would prefer a veteran back there. I would prefer. But the money is the, is the tough part. You know, you got, you got like Jacoby. Jacoby Brissett back there. I would like to have Jacoby Brissett. That's who I want. That's who I've been looking at. Not anybody else. I think Jacoby Brissett is the guy that I want behind Jalen Hurts. It's got to kind of mimic what he does. He's the closest to his skill set. Yep. He's a veteran. He's proven that he's capable of winning you two, three, four games. Hey, you know who I really would want? The kid that backs up uh, Lamar and Ball. Oh, yeah, uh, Snoop Huntley. Yeah. Tyler Huntley, yeah, yeah, he's good. That but he's going to get some money. Kid. He's going to get paid his offseason. He's hey, somebody's, somebody's going to get some money. He can play. Yeah, he can. He can. He can play. I'd love to have him on my team. Yeah, but give me uh, – like I'll, I'll, I'll roll with gonna, Jacoby yeah, He's going to make some – that's an $8 million a year deal there. He's going to get something in that room like $8 million. Yeah, and look, Jacoby Brissett right now, let's see here. Is he in see, Washington? He was in Washington. He's 31 years old. They don't have his annual average salary up, but in the one year he was in Washington, they gave him an average salary of $8 million with $7.5 million guaranteed. Kind of high. It is kind of high, which is higher than what he got in in, 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 uh, in Cleveland. That one, that was the biggest contract he ever got in terms of. I uh, that Joshua Dobbs kid, like five star says here. Dobbs is he's he's a smart dude. Um, he's tricky, man. Only because I did like what I saw, but at the same time, I know he fell off the planet. He fell off like, like three days, like a meteor after that. He fell off like a meteor, but I think that's because the they had film. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, no, it's totally he, true. Right, right. But um, look, as a backup, you could do a lot worse. Oh, yeah. I want, I, but I want a veteran back there. Yeah. Remember, it's a backup, not a starter. So Absolutely. I wouldn't All right, Tone. I'm gonna, we're going to talk to Merrill. You know what Merrill said? Merrill liked to see Jason Kelsey retire. That's going to be the first question out of the, out of the, um, the deal here. Then I'll ask him. Did you hear, about, real quick, did you hear the conversation he had with Shaq? You no. know. Kelsey and Shaq, where well, you know they were talking on his pod on Kelsey on Shaq's podcast, and Shaq was like, "Listen, man, you know you got the ring, you got the accolades, you ain't got nothing left to prove. Don't make the same mistake I did. You know I I kept playing, 
I lost my family. I lost my wife. I lost, I lost everything. Now, now I'm in a hundred thousand square foot house by myself. So whatever, 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 Brady. whatever decision you do make, think about your family first. Look at Brady. When I heard that conversation, it hey, shifted, it shifted me. Let me tell you this. I think he's going, I think he may, I think he may retire. Let me tell you something about that whole thing. Tom Brady sacrificed his family to continue playing for one more year and it cost him his family. Mm -hmm. And Tone, I'll tell you, your first love and your true love ain't your wife. It's the, mm -hmm. it's the game. Yeah. Don't play that long, sustain that kind of injury, have that kind of success like Shaq and Brady. And you love people around you. Mm -hmm. It's a sac it's a it's it's a selfish it is that bitch pride is selfish doesn't care will ruin everything you love except for the love of the game it's a fact it's a fact man shit man when i heard, when I heard I that me, i wanted to keep playing i go to canada hey man i'll tell you something she left me for 18 months <sighs> And you, you know didn't why? have to share that. You didn't you have know, to share that, but you did. Just so I could go to Canada and play football. Mm. The dumbest thing I ever did. Thank God you want her back. <laughs> hey, thank God, man, because I was eating cornbread with no eggs in it. It wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> I ate, oh, I ate man, no eggs in crazy, my cornbread. Man. He goes, yep, where's the egg? I go, there's eggs that go in. He goes, yeah, okay, all right. That cornbread fell right apart in the pan. Right apart, man. It was no good. Cornbread was terrible, man. I'm like, she, I go, there's an egg in cornbread. She goes, get out of the way. And that was how that whole thing happened. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right, Brian. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes, sir, man. It's always a pleasure. You got it. We're going to talk to Mal Reese. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. bubbles and the bubbly go for the story and the stories go for the win go to ocean casino resort book your trip at theoceanac.com Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their Fantasy Pick'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday. Watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game. And the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Go for the win. 
go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Big Seals National Football Show. Our good friend Merrill Reese is going to join us here in a couple minutes. We'll get his thoughts. You know, Tone's last question to me about leaving the game and Jason Kelsey. And Shaq, I, I, I think Shaq was probably talking about that Boston thing when he went to Boston. It never made sense. You know, Boston or was it Cleveland? It was something like that. And he played like last couple of years. After, and I know he got traded from Miami. And I think he went to Phoenix. But those last two stops, you know, with Chicago and Cleveland, you're like, I guess I, I get you love the game. I do. I get it. Dude, leaving the game is horrible. It's an absolute horrible experience. When you leave the game like that. And I saw that interview and he's like, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, why would, why would Jason Kelsey want to come back? Is it just for the love of the game? That's totally a reason too. It's totally a reason to want to come back. And I thought it was really interesting when I heard Shaq and Jason Kelsey talking. Shaq's like, I lost my entire family. I came back and I never should have. I had nothing left to prove. And I heard Merrill say something. I think he was on IP. When he said it, he goes, I'd like to see Jason Kelsey retire. I may be wrong. I don't want to put words into our friend's mouth. Plus, you're playing center. My good friend, Mike Webster, struggled with his life at the end. You know, it's the number one contact position next to a nose guard in all of pro football is the center position. You're constantly having hits to the head. Somebody said that Mike Webster had 79,000 hits to the head when he played with the Steelers. So I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I can't wait to listen to what Merrill thinks on this because he's seen so many great players. He joins us now here on the National Football Show. Merrill, you were on IP. Am I Merrill, you were on IP, right? When you said that, that am, am I right when I say that, that you'd like to see Jason call it a career? Merrill, we can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, we can't can how you doing? We can't hear you. See if we can get him up here because I'd love to hear his comments on this. Hopefully we can get him because I, if I'm not, hey, guys, right? He was on IP when he said that. That um, I I because I, I I I think I saw it or I heard it, and he's seen so many great ball players. Do you hear me? I got you now, my great okay. friend. Okay, Merrill, you were on IP. Is, is that right where you were talking about Jason Kelsey? I was. They asked me about Jason Kelsey last week. And I I look at Jason Kelsey not just as another football player, but as a friend. Uh, we've gotten close over the years. We've had a lot of chats. We've played golf together. He's a wonderful guy. And he has played 13 years. That's a lot of football. That's a lot of paddling. Dan, I can't tell you how many times I've seen Jason Kelsey hurt and go out of the game, and you figure it's over for him today, and he leads them out of the locker room of the second half. I mean, he is an iron horse. And yet the pounding, the pounding is accumulative. And I just think there's a point in your career where you've won the Super Bowl, you've done so many things, and it's, it's time to say that's it. You know, Merrill, I just told people that your first and true love in your life you know, people always say that, well, you know, it's great to tell people in public that you love your family so much, but 
when you sacrifice your body, you put your body parts on the line, and you've got pieces from Los Angeles to Seattle to Philly. They're all over the place. Leaving that game is one of the most difficult things ever to do because it's your first love. I mean, he's struggling with this decision right now. And when Shaq was saying that at the All-Star game, that made me go, wow. O'Neal saying, don't – and I think that's what you're saying, right, Merrill? There's, I, it's I not am. worth it. Listen, I, I know that he loves football. I know that as you get closer and closer to training camp, that lure will be there. And, and somebody uh, – some writer made a statement about me in the paper. They They – reprinted what I said, and then he said, but what does Merrill know? How does he know how much effect Jason Kelsey has had, uh, how much damage from, from all the football he's played? He's not a doctor. He's not somebody who has any way of really knowing what it will do to him in the future. It's only the fact that this, is being, this will be my 48th year in the booth, and I go back. And I go back to the guys who I knew well and cared about in 1977 and 1978, the Vermeil teams. And so few of them are still around. And throughout the years, guys who were good friends, and, and by the time they're 50, 55 years old, instead of enjoying their retirement, they've had so much damage. They're, we know all about the horrors of CTE. And, and forget the joints and the inflammation and the all kinds of other problems that they can have. Listen, I think there's a point that you reach where you've accomplished so much that it just makes sense to say, that's it. You know, I, I've had a great career. I'm independently wealthy. My family is fine. And especially with a guy like Jason Kelsey, who can have his choice of careers if he wants to broadcast, if he wants to go into any other field, he is one of the most popular athletes in the history of this city. Maybe one of the most popular athletes in NFL history. That's easily one of the most insulting things I've ever heard somebody say to you because, Merrill, you're around these players, and you get to what? You don't have to be a doctor to know what the pounding and the uh, things that – have caused people to have issues in their life. Like my friend, Andre waters. Oh, no. So when people say that shit to me and I hear that it's so insulting because I wish we could have all reached out to Andre and help him with his struggles as he was. Cause he lived in Tampa. I used to go see him all the time. And I, I, I mean, you have no idea what some of these people are talking about when they say things like that to you that you've been around these men, and you know what that game, it keeps sure. you in it. Sure. Who was the other safety with Andre? Wes Hopkins. He's gone. He's gone. Last year, Frank LeMaster passed away uh, and with, with so many different kinds of injuries and did not live the rest of his football, his, his after football life with any kind of, of good feeling. I mean, he had so many setbacks and, so much pain for so many years. I think if you get out of this game healthy, thank your lucky stars and move on. I got to I got to throw this at you here. You know, there's a lot of work to do on this team on um, this offseason and I and I say this financially because check this out. Not a lot of folks are hitting on it, but the Eagles have to decide by May 2nd if they're going to pick up Devontae Smith's fifth-year option, which will be $15 million in 25, and if they don't, 2024 he goes in and that's his last season. Before in the offseason, he'll be a free agent. I mean, then you've got Hassan Reddick. you got the two corners to worry about. you got a big salary in AJ. There's some real issues, isn't there? At least before you get into the combines and free agency – there's some really big decisions that have to be made with this team that's going to affect its direction. Do you agree? I do. And you just mentioned three guys who they can't afford to lose. They're two of the best receivers they've ever had. And you've talked about a, a terrific edge rusher. And they're also good guys. How about this one? Merrill, um, do you believe that the Eagles should bring back Hassan Reddick? Because Hassan Reddick has given you 30 sacks since he's been an Eagle. However, for them letting him to walk out in the open market like that to see what his value is. 
it's kind of a convoluted message. Hey, we love you, but let's see what you're worth. I mean, how did you take that when they allowed him to seek an opportunity just to see what his value is? I'm not saying they're getting rid of him, but that's kind of peculiar. Let's see what you're worth. Is that the case? I mean, I don't know. I've, I've, I, I mean, it, it's a it's a great call. I let's see if we can bring up. I, I, is that the case, Merrill? I mean, it's true. The Eagles haven't really publicly said that yet. No, not and, and nobody has said it to me. I've read it, as I said before, but I don't have any firsthand knowledge. I wouldn't be telling you. Well, that's the case, and here's what they should do. I will tell you, it's very important for them to bring back Hassan Reddick because you don't get players like that every day. I mean, he's. He is an outstanding player. He is still at the top of his game. He is a team leader. And again, he is a very, very solid person. What did, what do you what have you made on the new hirings of the coordinators, Vic Fangio, and then also with Kellen Moore? How much impact do you think these two guys bring to the team? And maybe some stability. I think enormous. I think enormous. I think it's going to be Kellen Moore's offense. It, it really, from what I understand, from what Nick Sirianni said, it was not Brian Johnson's offense. It was Nick Sirianni's offense. And I'm not criticizing him, but yeah, Brian Johnson was the guy who, who got the ax. But it was not his offense. And I, I think this is, I, I think the world of Kellen Moore. I really do. I, I think that Kellen Moore and Jalen Hurts are going to be a wonderful combination. I think they're going to do great things together. And Vic Fangio's reputation speaks for itself. He's one of the best defensive coordinators, best defensive coaches in the NFL, in NFL history, really. He's up there with the best. I have to ask you one more time, and I want to kind of emphasize it here for you. You know, I don't know what, what the issue was with Angelo and with, um, with Andy Reid, but he didn't seemingly have, you know, he didn't, maybe because they're looking at him different because of Philly. Do you think he is different now? Is that a different coach in Kansas City, in your opinion? Or is that the same guy, Merrill, that you saw in Philly? He's a great coach. He has always been a great coach. He's the winningest coach in Eagles history. There were things that, that you could point out with every coach. Well, Maybe he could have managed this game better, or maybe he could take, you know, as Andy would say, like that. There are always plays that I'd like to come back and, but, but look what he did. He had them to five NFC championship games. He had them do a Super Bowl. His players played for him. The last few years weren't good, but there were a lot of things good. Okay. Hopefully we can finish up here just with Merrill here. And just get one more last thing here. Go ahead, go ahead, bring him back, but, Merrill. Go ahead, Merrill. But but Andy was a terrific coach, and when he came to Kansas City, he I think he benefited from the change. And as he moved on, he just never stood still. He just became a better and better and better coach. And now he's one of the the five. Okay, let's 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 see here. I just I want to finish it up here. Um, with, with Merrill here. Let's see, uh, Tone, let's see if we can click him back in and out here again one more time. Here, let's go back one more time here. Hey, what, 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 the only issue I think he had, Merrill, was that people love Andy Reid and they like Doug. That was Angelo's, that was Angelo's takeaway is that he goes, there's so many people in our city and in the media that love Andy, but kind of like Doug. Well, did you love Andy and like Doug? Yeah. Well, Andy was here for 14 years. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know, that's going to matter if I'm married to you longer. Doug, Doug, <laughs> Doug was here for a handful. That was it. Absolutely. You know, don't you don't you think with all coaches there is a shelf life? Yes. A job. But Andy Andy always was a terrific coach, and Andy's a terrific person. And I think Doug is. I you know Doug's. Doug's a great guy and a terrific coach. They're lucky to have him in Jacksonville. Do, do you agree it was time for Andy Reid to leave after 14 years? Well, I think I think 
at at that point there was so there were so many things Dan that went on that I think he needed to change a venue and I think the team had to move on although <laughs> although his replacement was a an utter disaster ultimately it really was Merrill thank you so much my friend you're always great to me and I so appreciate it thank you my pleasure take care you got it the great Merrill Reese we so appreciate him being patient with us we Thank him again. All right. Hit the like button. We'll reset everything. Keep it here on the National Football Show. bubbles and the bubbly go for the story and the stories go for the win go to ocean casino resort book your trip at theoceanac.com Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their Fantasy Pick'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday. Watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game. And the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. On the Vikings, I offer Kirk Cousins a contract. I'm not signing Justin Jefferson to a $30 million deal with a training wheels quarterback. That's not what I'm doing. You, you, I mean, you're going to build this thing wrong. I mean, you cannot have that. You have to have a quarterback. And to me, Going into the draft and developing one of these guys, and you got a $30 million quarter and you got a $30 million receiver. I'm trading Jefferson for as many draft picks as I can get. Devontae Adams got traded. Look what look, Green Bay's in a better position today without Adams being on the team. And he was the best receiver in the league next to Justin Jefferson. Sills, you would do that. If it gave me three ones and I don't have to spend $30 million on a wide receiver and I got a horseshit quarterback, what's the point? What's the point? If you give him $30 million, you better give Cousins a contract. Or you better make a move for Russell Wilson, but you can't because that's another big deal. 
You got Hey, I'm telling you, if you're the Minnesota Vikings, you might want to consider trading him because you've got a ton of rebuilding to do on offense. Look at what's happened with that team cap wise. You got rid of Dalvin Cook. You're going to get rid of Kirk Cousins. You're going to have Justin Jefferson and a training wheels quarterback and a suspect O line and a suspect running game. And you're going to pay that and think you're going to win games in that division where Green Bay and Detroit have gotten better. You've gotten worse. You've, you've gotten worse. Dude, I have no interest in J.J. McCarthy. Zero interest in that guy. Okay? You know, I heard somebody actually make a comparison to Jalen Hurts and J.J. McCarthy. I've heard that comparison. Hurts at Oklahoma, though, was better than Hurts at Alabama. McCarthy last year at Michigan, I thought he was okay. I think they could have won a national title with another guy. He's just a guy to me. He's just a guy. And, and again, I'll, I'll say this about Harbaugh. Har Harbaugh's never really recruited anybody up there. Best quarterback he's ever recruited, I believe, is Andrew Luck. Okay, I mean, I don't remember him putting a lot of superstar quarterbacks in Michigan. Okay? Jefferson will ask for a trade. Um, yeah. But to see when you trade him, I'll tell you this, you know who has money for him? Houston. Houston has the money for him. And they got the quarterback. And they got the picks. If I'm the Minnesota Vikings, I call them up and go, what do you want? You give them the picks. They got the Watson picks. And they got 80, and they got like $67 million in cap space. They can make that work. They can make, Houston can make that work. And you got Nico Collins and Justin Jefferson and C.J. Stroud in your offense, you're going places with that. Hey, could you imagine that one, Tone? Justin Jefferson, Nico Collins, and C.J. Stroud down there with D'Amico Ryans and that defense. They're set for 10 years. Jefferson's not that old. Uh, well, you know, hey, I think Nick Casario, I think he's an outstanding general manager. Trade Reddick to the Texans. They got the money in the in the in the picks. That's another great one. And he's out of the conference. Okay? And he's out of the conference. I keep the picks if I was Tex if I was the Texans. That GM can draft. Nick Casario, yes, he can. He helped build that New England Patriot dynasty up there. He can draft. Look what he did in this last draft. He premium. He went with uh, the premium picks, and he got Will Anderson and Stroud. It was, it was smart as hell because those are centerpieces that are going to be part of the fixture and the core group of guys in Texas for that Texans team. Okay? Send AJ to the Texans. That's Now you guys are looking at it right. Money and picks. And good. They need to get better on defense. Put somebody on the other side of Will Anderson. Will Anderson and Hassan Reddick in a D'Amico Ryan's defense, he might get $20 million down there. Boy, that thing would look awesome. Reddick to the Texans? Makes sense. Would they pay that? The Texans are in the best position of any football team going into the uh, going into free agency. They have picks, cap space, and a future. Name me a team that has all that. And they're good. 
Okay? And they can start saying no. They've got a great future. I'll tell you this. I thought that the Jaguars were going to be in a good place in two years when Doug from last year. The Texans, in my opinion, boy, I'll tell you what, that C.J. Stroud and and Trevor Lawrence matchup, I think that thing's going to be sensational to watch. That thing's going to be awesome to watch for the next couple of years. Absolutely spectacular. How about trading Sweat to the Texans? I'm not trading Josh Sweat. I don't need to move him right now. His number comes up next year. Seals, if the Eagles sign Jalen Johnson, you still draft a corner in the first round? No. 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 I draft a linebacker or I move out of the first and get twos. The 22nd pick in the draft, okay? Let's say you're down there. You're you're at 22, right? Okay. You get down there and you see that there's not really, unless there's an old lineman in there that you're really in love with. They could probably do that. Okay, they could probably go, they could probably go there. Another offensive lineman. They're not going to go D tackle for sure. To me, if your corner's not sitting down there at 22 like Kool-Aid, and if you go into free agency and you do something with the guy in Chicago or you make a trade, I might be I might be tempted to trade out of that 22 and get multiple picks. Because I have multiple positions and I need what what else happens when you trade out of the first round? What else happens? You get cheaper. You can Fred Warner was a third round draft choice. Okay. Fred was a Fred was a third round draft choice. You get cheaper and you're gonna line up better. With less misses because it's next, it's best player available once you get past like pick 45. I would say in this upcoming draft, there's probably remember what I told you last year. What what Tom, what did I say last year? There was probably five or six dudes that were in a sandbox that were really gonna be impactful. The Witherspoon kid, the Christian Gonzalez kid the Jalen Carter kid. I didn't think Stroud was in that box. I thought Bijan Robinson was in that box. I thought the tackle from the Cardinals was in that box. Paris Johnson Jr. from Ohio State. I thought he was in that. I didn't really think that there was a, a ton of a ton of superstar players in this draft. After the 10 prospects, you felt it was, yeah, it was like pick them. It was shit like that. There, there, there were some good players. I'm not saying you couldn't find good. But it was like, next guy, I mean, and then it, there's going to be some surprises. Okay. This coming draft, because do you know what happens? The quarterbacks, they screw the draft up every year. Let's see how many quarterbacks are going to get drafted in the first round. Drake May, Caleb Williams, Michael Penix will probably go. Uh, somebody's going to take Bo Nix. Uh, Jaden, Jaden Daniels, there's going to be potentially five quarterbacks and God knows if somebody takes a gamble and goes with JJ McCarthy, there could be between five and six quarterbacks taken in the first 25 picks. Okay. This draft class reminds me of the, um, what's that when that one quarterback got drafted out of Oklahoma state. Um, Brandon, what was his name? What was that kid's name? There's a bunch of bums in that draft. This draft reminds me of the Kenny Pickett class. Yeah, Kenny Pickett's class. I never thought shit of Kenny Pickett either. I didn't like him at all. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like him at all. Penix is a second rounder, they said. No way. Yeah, Brandon Whedon. That's it. Thank you, Lucius. Brandon Whedon was a bum, and he went in the first round. He was a bum. Hey, Rico, I thought Bo was okay at Auburn. Hey, how about this? 
Bo, think about what he did. He bullshitted you. Why? Tell me why Bo Nix is not more than a fourth rounder. Do you guys know why Bo Nix is not more than a fifth rounder or fourth rounder? Why do you think that is? Why? What did he do to bullshit you? So let me get this right. He leaves. He leaves the Southeastern Conference where the best corners on the planet reside and the best defenses reside in the SEC to go to a conference that can't play defense at all. I mean, USC can't play defense. Utah kind of can. Any of those quarterbacks that were in, you think there was any coincidence? All those quarterbacks in the Pac-10 last year or the Pac-12 last year all had great success. Why? All shitty defenses they were playing against. I looked at them and I went, okay, so what you threw for 400 yards versus Oklahoma State or Oregon State? So mo- So what? Those teams suck on defense. Dude, you throw for 450 yards like this Jaden Daniels kid did at LSU, and you're doing that against AM or some of these Southeastern Conference defenses with some of these guys that are going to go in the top three, top three rounds playing the corner position. You got my attention. It's who you play against. It's not who you are. It's who you're playing against and the success you're having. Dude, if you're in the SEC and you throw for 350 yards on Patrick Sertain, you got my attention. I mean, I'm interested in that. What did he do? Threw for 350 on him? Who the hell was he thrown to? Well, he's thrown to – then he started doing this. He was throwing to Devontae and, you know, Justin Jefferson. You're like, well, shit. <laughs> okay. But those are people he's going to play against in the pros. Those quarterbacks all in the Pac-12. You notice they're all from the Pac-12 except one. Or two, Mays from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Do they play defense in the ACC? No. There's only one guy that played against competition that you look at and go, hmm, that's Jaden Daniels. The rest of those guys played against nobodies. That guy, Jaden Daniels, I think threw for 600 yards in one game. I don't think he sucks. And look at Michigan. Look what Michigan, uh, that good defense that Michigan had. Look what they did to Michael Penix in the title game. They crushed him. Dude, Michigan defense is good. But when you got to play NFL defenses, that's a little different. That's a higher upgrade than playing against the Wolverines. Okay? Yeah, when people are going like, man, it's Bo Nix. There's something special about him. No, there's not. What? That he played 14 years in college football? Washington's line is solid. Defense is in the Pac-12 blow. Okay? They're not very good. They're just not. C.J. Stroud played in the Big Ten. Um, I know. I wasn't talking about him. I was talking about the Pac-12. And 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 by the way, they crushed they crushed Michael Penix in the Big Twelve or in the uh, Big Ten when he was at Indiana. He was always hurt. Well, Sills, you didn't believe in CJ. No, I didn't. And why is that? Because Ohio State has never produced a quarterback in the history of the program except for him. In 155 years of Ohio State football, there's never been a quarterback worth a shit come out of Ohio State, and he's the first one. Yes. It only took him 155 years. Okay. Only 155 years to produce one. Just saying. So you think a lot of defensive talent going to be pushed down the draft? I do. I think there's going to be some kids down there at 22 because of these quarterbacks. Okay. Only, hey, only 155 years, that's bonk. I mean, you can't name me 
an all-pro quarterback from Ohio State, not named C.J. Stroud. There isn't one. Shit, I, I don't even know if there's a pro bowler. You can't name one. <laughs> yeah. Hey, John. John, go. Hey, John, just to show you how shitty Ohio State is at quarterback, they had the guy. They had the guy and told the guy Justin Fields is better. They told Joe Burrow, you have to transfer. Joe Burrow went to LSU, won a national title in the Heisman. They had the guy. And they told him he sucked. You 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 had him. He made the Pro Bowl as as a right. Yeah, that's the first guy in Ohio State history to do that shit. Okay? Absolutely. Hey, hey, hey uh, Kyle. Sills, try to watch your show when I can work at Pfizer. <laughs> yeah, I'm, so, I'm, I'm very sure, Kyle, that you have the volume turned down low. If you work at Pfizer, I'll try. I'll try to talk a little softer because you know we don't want we don't want you to we don't want you to lose your gig. <laughs> Auburn quarterback suck too. Well, at least they got an MVP out of their school in the NFL. Cam Newton. Yeah, at least I got an MVP. <laughs> Mississippi State quarterbacks, look at you guys. Uh, Gator quarterbacks blow too, and anybody that went to Florida sucks. Just remember that, anybody, anybody, front office people, talent, I don't give a shit. Anybody who went to Florida, I can't stand them. <laughs> okay, anybody. How we went to Florida? Oh, I, I didn't I didn't know that. <laughs> oh. Including Howie? Who's Howie? <laughs> baby Jesus? I like baby Jesus, big Chris. Tell him, don't you like baby Jesus? Tim Tebow. So as I graduated from Florida, would I suck? Damn Tone, don't do that to me. Okay. Well, wait a minute. I have to probably say no because, hey, Tone, I played for the Cowboys. Do you hate me? <laughs> hey, Tone, should I get the helmet? <laughs> Don't let me get the helmet, man. Don't let me get the help. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I guess so, man. If you went to Flair, I'm going to have to relent and say yes. Shit, Tone. Sills, if I went to Gainesville? Sills, don't drink Gatorade. It's named after... I, I don't drink Gatorade. I don't drink Gatorade because of that. That's <laughs> totally true. I don't drink Gatorade. Uh-uh. More Powerade. I don't drink anything Gatorade. Totally, because the Gators... You know the Gators make money off that? They still pay the Gators a percentage because... The, you know, a guy, what, what, what hey, t hey, um, yeah, what was the guy's name? That was Spurrier's head coach. And they needed something with electrolytes. It wasn't Charlie Pell. Who was the guy there? And it wasn't Dickey. Who was that coach back in the day? And what he was the coach of Steve Spurrier when Spurrier won the Heisman. And yeah, that's right. Barb, it was invented right around Spurrier's time. I got the whole history of it. And he, it, yeah. Yep, Ray Graves. Thank you, Tone. Ray Graves. Ray Graves was the head coach, and he went to, like, the science department at Florida. And he told them, we need a drink because these kids don't have energy because of the humidity. Dude, I'm going to tell you guys. When you play college football in Florida, like right now, I'm fat, out of shape, everything. But when I played at Florida or University of Miami, 99 humidity, 99 temperature, 
And you could lose 28 pounds in a game or practice every day. I went up to Florida and we played games. We played the Gators in Florida one year. And we went up to the swamp and we beat them. It was 132 degrees on the turf and the sun wasn't out. The, the, the skin on the bottom of my feet and my teammates was peeling off. It was so hot. When we got on the airplane to go back to Miami, all you saw in the aisles were IVs and all of our arms. Jerome lost in that game. I think Jerome lost 35 pounds. I lost 23. We had a bunch of guys. Man, we were like, and you're freezing cold. You're, I, I have never been in worse shape in my life playing the way we practiced and played in Florida. But when those big fat dudes would come down from the north, like Notre Dame, Yale Notre Dame used to come down and we'd make sure we played one o'clock games. Hey, hey Yale, you'll like this. Um, we we play these, we play Notre Dame at one o'clock. These big fat guys come down 10 inches of snow, and we just beat the piss out of them 58 to 7. Biggest ass beating in the history of Notre Dame football. Beat them by 51 points. And these guys are just red. These big faces are red like red apples. And I'm sitting there doing this. Pretty hot, huh, hoss? And the guy goes, I don't know how you guys do it. I go, took me about a year and a half to get used to this shit. It did. I first got down there. I told my grandfather I wanted to come home. I couldn't believe how hot it was. I was like standing on the sun. It was so hot, man. Dude, it takes something out of you. It. Every game I would play, I'd be laying on my bed. My girlfriend would be with me then, and I go, don't touch me, man. I'm just laying there, and you're, the heat's coming off you because you're out there at the Orange Bowl, and you're just you've, 25, 30 pounds you could lose, and you're laying there. My, my aunt who watches the show, she knows what I'm talking about. My family would come down. I couldn't really spend a lot of time because it was just overheating. It was terrible, man. It really was. But our our, our big deal was – was that we knew the other team was struggling more. They were struggling more. Okay? I love Florida, but the wild wildlife is crazy. I'm not going to mention the damn frogs. How about the snakes? Right? Dude. Dude, I'm just telling you, man, I've never been that. I've never in my life sweated so much like that when you play a game where you practice. And in Florida, you get these three o'clock rains. The rain comes, then the humidity comes, and it's like an oven's turned on. All these coaches used to come down and watch us practice. Like, um, yeah, Lou has to come down and watch it. How do you get these guys to practice so hard? How do you get these guys to put you going in there? Barry Switzer would come down and watch us. Shit, your guy. Um, your guy would come down and watch us from the Eagles. Was always watching us. Buddy would come down. I told you our story with Buddy. Buddy would come down and watch his play. And everybody kept saying, how do you get these guys to practice so hard in practice? Well, because we I had Cortez Kennedy and Russell Maryland behind me. And we had numerous positions like that where we had all pros and potential Hall of Famers in the NFL were all behind everybody. You were afraid to lose your – you lost your job in practice, not the games. Jimmy would take your, your, your job away from you in practice if you didn't practice hard. Yeah, we had three-hour practices. And if you didn't practice well, it took the job away from you. Give it to Cortez or Russell Mar Russell Maryland was the number one overall pick. Cortez was in – he's in the Hall of Fame. He's one of my backups. Craziness. You didn't want to come out because you're afraid to lose your gig. Um, let's see. All good. All right. Let's take a time out here. We're going to reset. We'll talk a little more about Devontae. Also, the direction in the draft. And Eagles are picking at 22. I'm going to tell you the dance partners I think would make some sense here for the Eagles. We'll do that next. Keep it here, National Football Show.
Go for the pulse and the pools. Go for the ooze and the oz. Go for the bubbles and the bubbly. Go for the story and the stories. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their Fantasy Pick'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday. Watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game. And the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. E-A-G-L-E-X. Eagles. LeBron James with his 20th All-Star game. Damn. Damn. I'm not a LeBron fan. Like, somebody asked me the other day, Sales, who would be your top five players in the history of the sport? Well, the guy who dominated the most. It'd be Kareem. It'd be MJ. It'd be LeBron. And I'd put Wilt as my top five guys. Those would be my top five players. Let's see. Kareem, never lost a game in high school. Lost one game in college. Was a three-time finals MVP. Won three national titles. Beat the national title team as a freshman, but couldn't play back then. They outlawed the dunk. Um, because of him. Then he won five MVPs and he won five NBA champ or six NBA championships, I believe. Five and one, right. Five and one. He won in Milwaukee one and he won five in Los Angeles. So six. So it'd be, it'd be, and he's got the greatest shot in the history of the sport. It's Kareem. Nobody's won more than Kareem. Kareem dominated the NBA. You can't get over it. There's nobody has dominated the game more than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Nobody. Held the all-time points number forever. Titles as many as Jordan. MVPs. Never loses. Crushed it in college. He's the most dominant college basketball player of all time. I mean, he's the most dominant high school player of all time. Nobody compares to um, to Abdul Jabbar. You don't have the resume to, to put it up. Michael Jordan's resume doesn't stand next to Kareem's. The only one that kind of does is Russell, but it's not really because then when you look at the points, he doesn't. Only Wilt and Russell combined stand next to Jabbar. I mean, so I had I had Kareem. Michael, 
LeBron. I think Magic Johnson for. And then I had Wilt. Those are my top five. Magic revolutionized the point guard position. Just insane. LeBron 20. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I think LeBron James is the only player in NBA history that has been to 10 finals that's not a Celtic. Does that sound right? Does that sound right? LeBron's the only guy with 10 final appearances that's not a Celtic. I think I think he's the only guy in the league to do that. Thanks, Tone. I yeah, I just you know, I, I think Kareem doesn't get the love because that he was an activist and his Muslim um beliefs that he had during a time when our country wasn't very open to that kind of thought. And he's an aloof type of guy. And I never thought the media liked him or understood him. It's not your job to like him or understand him. See, everyone loves magic. Everyone loves Magic Johnson. Well, that should not be relevant, but it is. We were talking about certain media people liking me or not liking me. That should not be a factor. Whether Kareem is a – Abdul Jabbar is the greatest basketball player that's ever lived. Give me a better resume. Who has a better resume than Kareem? Who has a shot that's undefendable? Name me one guy. But the respect you have to give LeBron. You see, you got guys like Bayless who shit all over. Akeem was fantastic. Chris, Olajuwon, in my opinion, is a more skilled player than O'Neal. Shoot free throws, 78%. Had a three-pointer. Ran the floor. Defensive player of the year. MVP. Back-to-back titles. Akeem Olajuwon, he didn't play basketball until his, hey, Yale, help me out on this. Um, I don't believe that Akeem played basketball until his sophomore year at Houston because he was a soccer player from Nigeria. He didn't play basketball ever until he got to the University of Houston. Um. Duncan has no comparison to Wilt or to um, to uh, Jabbar. Jabbar has the greatest resume of all time. You're the greatest college basketball player. You're the greatest high school basketball player. And you're the greatest NBA player. But again, the, the, about, about LeBron, kudos to you, dude. You've been an absolute centerpiece for that league. You've been a really great ambassador to the NBA. I don't like your politics whatsoever. However, you you came into the league and you fulfilled your destiny. There's a guy that came in with all that the chosen one and all this. He 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 fulfilled it. He lived up and exceeded his his destiny. It's quite an accomplishment. He lived up. That's right. Chris, he lived up to the hype. How many how many athletes in sports can you honestly say lived up to the hype when they came in? You know, we were talking about Jalen being, or Chris Sims was talking about, overrated. Hard to live up to that hype. Did Kobe live up to that hype? Yeah. Yeah, Kobe did. You know what, though? Was Kobe not? Wait a minute. Kobe didn't even really start his first year. And plus, he was a trade from the Charlotte Hornets. I mean, Jerry West was on my radio show years ago, and he told me how that all went down. You remember something? He, he, he was a trade with the Hornets. The Hornets originally drafted him. Then they traded Vladi Divac. If I'm not... Tone, am I right when I say that? My memory right? They traded Vladi Divac to the 
Hornets to draft Kobe. Does that sound right? And that's how they got Kobe was they traded Vladi to the Charlotte Hornets. I thought that's how that all went down. That he wasn't initially in the, in the conversation for the Lakers to get him. So the Lakers sent Vladi Divac to the Charlotte Hornets. I think that's how that came up. I think that's how they got him. Was that they um, they traded him to um, oh with Eddie Jones? That's right. Okay, Ed, I, that's they traded Eddie Jones and Vladi Divac to Charlotte so that they get the rights to draft Kobe, and then they drafted Kobe Bryant. But they didn't play, remember they didn't play him. Because who they had? They had Dale Harris, right, as the coach initially for him, and he just sucked the life out of Kobe. You know, it's funny. Um, years and years ago, I had a chance to talk to Kobe about this. And let me tell you the one thing that he said when we had him. We, we were at an ESPN event, and he's sitting around talking. And I and I asked him the question. I go, how come you didn't play your, your, like, your rookie year a lot? And all your contemporaries like Iverson were playing. I, Allen Iverson was playing a ton of basketball. And he goes like this. He goes, Dell didn't want to play me, man. He just didn't play me. Sucked the life out of me. Okay? He just sucked the life out of me. All my contemporaries were playing, getting playing time. He never, he ever, never gave me any – um any love or anything like that. Del Harris screwed it all up. Then I think they had Rudy T. Then they got Phil after that, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's how that went down. Um, Dr. J, when he came out of Massachusetts and he went to the ABA, whew, my favorite basketball player growing up. I never watched NBA basketball. And the Knicks were good when I was a kid, believe it or not. That's when they had Walt Frazier, the Busher and them guys. They won two titles in like four years. Sound right? And um, I I loved that basketball team, but I loved the I loved the Nets. Dr. J with that big afro, thirty two, jumping from the top of the key. Holy shit, was he worth? He was so spectacular to watch. I really don't think I think the NBA fan and you Philly fans, <clears throat> you never saw the best of Dr. J. Because they were in New Jersey or New York at the time. They were in New York with the Nets. He was spectacular. You could you could not not watch him. That's how great he was. Oh, my God. I had a big old poster of him. Remember that Sports Illustrated picture of him on the cover going up like that? Man, he was so unbelievable. When I was a kid, my, my childhood sports heroes were Seaver, Dr. J, Namath, and Mike Bossy. Those, those were the people I kind of grew up with. Every year I was in high school, the Islanders won a Stanley Cup. <laughs> I mean, every year I was in high. How about that one for you, Tone? Every year I grew up and I went to high school, the Islanders won a cup. I mean, I went four in a row. I was like, holy shit, they were great. The Yankees sucked, Chris. They had Munson, and they didn't start getting better until 76, 77. Because they went from 65. They went from 65 to 75, and they were terrible. Then Steinbrenner bought the team in 73 from CBS. Get this, he bought the Yankees for $3 million. George Steinbrenner bought the Yankees for $3 million from CBS. CBS had bought the Yankees. And they owned it, and the team was in chaos. Okay? And Steinbrenner bought the team in 73. He was still living in Cleveland. I used to have the boss. I used to have Steinbrenner. Come into my studio in Tampa. Hey, anybody in here used to listen to me in Tampa? And George would come into my show. So get this. So I used to be on WDAE. I was there for 50. I know everybody thinks that I got fired a billion times. I was at DAE for 15 years doing mornings. 
So finally, Mr. Steinbrenner, who lived there on Bayshore, called up a friend of mine. And he called him up and he goes, hey, George Steinbrenner wants to come into the show. I go, when? He goes, no, that's not how he does it. This guy's name was Ted Webb. He used to do WFLA. And all of a sudden, I see somebody walk into my control room. And it's George. And he walks into the studio. And I go, Mr. Steinbrenner. That's how, that's how um, Arnold Palmer walked on my show, too. I've had two guys walk on my show like that. Arnold Palmer and um, George Steinbrenner. Steinbrenner did that like 10, 15 times, though. He'd just show up. He didn't want to have anybody know he was coming. So he would he came on my show, and I told him, I go, hey, you know what we have in common? You bought the team on my birthday, January 3rd. He goes, oh, my God, do you know Babe Ruth was traded from the Red Sox on January 3rd? I said, yeah, I'm assuming that's why you bought the team on that day, too, because that was the day the Red Sox traded Ruth, January 3rd. And he's like, it is. And so I'm like, so we he, he sparked it up. Every January 3rd, I'd get a present from him, a Yankee or something. From the Yankees. The Yankees used to send me. Um, um, hey, hey, Tone. Hey, guys, I gotta show you this. Hang on. I got this the other day, and I found this, and you guys are gonna dig this. So, you know that 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 hockey thing? I'll tell you a lot of people in New York absolutely love me. So Here's the Winter Classic. See this? John Tortorella gave me this. Winter Classic. Torch sent me this when he was the coach of the Rangers. My wife dug that out. She goes, remember John Tortorella giving you that? I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> and, um, uh, Torch gave me that when he was the head coach of the um, of the Rangers. Dude, I loved I, – I, 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 listen, you know, I'm a huge hockey fan. Hockey fan ho – hockey has no draw whatsoever anywhere. I completely understand that. But I've been to – my wife's been to probably more hockey games than she's been to football games. Absolutely. Seals don't – no, they, the cowboy helmet – the cowboy helmet stays hidden. Cowboy helmet stays hidden. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah, Lower Marion, that's where he went to school. By the way, they found a jersey that someone stole out of the gym that Kobe had given to um, the high school. Somebody finally found it. It was in storage. And they put the thing back um, in the high school, Kobe's jersey. That's what I'm understanding. Kobe was unbelievably awesome to talk to. You know, not, not <laughs> he was a hard-ass worker, man. Hard-ass worker. All right. Let's get back to this here with as we're getting ready for the draft the offseason we talked about the money let's talk about the positioning on what you have to do when it comes to your draft how many people believe that the eagles should trade out of the first round at 22 somebody brought something interesting up about the quarterbacks they said dan do you think that the defensive talent can get pushed down the the draft board and there'd be more quality guys at the bottom of the draft. I'm going to tell you guys, I believe that there are some really great quality players that you get in almost every draft at the top, but I think you have less chance of failure at the bottom of the first round than you do at the top of the first round. I think there's, there's no coincidence. All the great teams. How can Kansas City be as good as they are in drafting 32nd every year? Do you ask yourself that? How can they be that good? Drafting in the 30s. Or the Steelers down there. Or when the Patriots were picking. Did you not ask you? How come all the shitty teams, like the Jags, 
the Lions back in the day, the Jets. All those teams pick high in the draft. You would think eventually that's got to catch up. But it doesn't. But it doesn't. Right? It doesn't. So would you trade out of the first round to get more picks in two and three? Like here, I would here, here, here's your trading partners. Okay, Chicago's getting the first pick. Washington's got the second. If I'm Washington, do I hang there? Or do I take a quarterback? Or do I draft Marvin Harrison? If you're Chicago, what are you doing with Justin Fields? Why don't you get him Marvin Harrison Jr.? They may have played together. Is it possible they played together at Ohio State? Is it possible they were at Ohio State together? Um, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Justin Fields? He may have been a freshman, and Fields may have been a senior. So they're, they 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 may have played together. So I know that teams are now like Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow. Um, you're seeing that matchup where guys play Jalen and Devontae. So you may you okay right? New England's at three. They're going to take a quarterback there. They're not hanging with Mac Jones. So you got Washington and you got New England taking two quarterbacks, which means two defensive players slide down the board. Arizona's got two first round picks, four and 27. If you're Arizona, who are you picking at four? What are you doing with Kyler Murray? Is Kyler Murray your guy? Well, I need to get him some weapons. Is there a wide receiver after Marvin Harrison? Or do I trade down with the Chargers? The Giants. Giants. The Giants aren't going to take a quarterback. They just paid a guy. The Giants are going to take a wide out. What are the Chargers going to do? Sitting there at five with Jim Harbaugh. Got to get a wide out. Got to get a wide out. What's Tennessee? Hey, Will Levis, do you like him? Do you like Will Levis? Atlanta, they need a quarterback. There's another one off the board. Who's another defensive guy down? Chicago with their second pick. They got one and nine. Chicago probably take a defensive guy here. The Jets, what are they going to do? Are you going to draft Aaron Rodgers' heir apparent at quarterback here? Probably not. They're probably going to get another offensive lineman here for um, Aaron Rodgers. Probably getting a lineman here, O-line. Was another defensive guy down the board. Minnesota, what are you going to do here? You're going to draft a quarterback? Let's say you are, because you're not going to pay Cousins. You're already up to four quarterbacks drafted. Another defensive guy slides down the board. Denver, they're cutting Russell Wilson after June 1. Five guys? Raiders just lose Garoppolo at 13. You're going to draft a quarterback? Probably. I say five of those. I think five of those guys could go in the first 13 picks. Absolutely. And all those defensive guys just start sliding down. What are you going to do in New Orleans? You sticking with Derek Carr? You probably have to because of the money he gave his ass. Indianapolis, you got your guy last year. What are you going to do this year? Probably a wide out here. 
Seattle at 16. Gino just picked up last Friday, 12.7 million. You're not drafting a quarterback there. Probably take a defensive player there. So one of your star players defensively is off the board. One of them corners. 17, Jacksonville. What are they doing? I think Jacksonville, they need more help in that back end and their secondary. And I think they need help in the old line. Cincinnati. What's T. Higgins doing? Probably drafting a wideout. Joe Burley just gave him $55 million. The Rams. You got Puko Nakua and um, Cooper Cup. Probably an old lineman here. Number 20, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh needs a quarterback. Do you trade that pick away at 20? Do you give the 20th pick to Denver? Is, 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 is Russell Wilson worth the 20th pick to the Broncos? It is if they pick up some of that money. Would you do that? You pick up half the contract, I'll give you the 20th pick, and you give us Wilson. Because the money's insane. They need a quarterback. And at 20, they're not going to get one of the better dudes. Do you trade down? Could be. What's Miami do at 21? They need defense and offensive line help. And they're at 22. What do you guys think the Eagles do at 22? I laid this out. And I'm kind of, by, the, by the way, these are kind of partners that you can look at and kind of what angle and direction they're going in now. You think they take a corner here? Does the 22nd pick match up with Kool-Aid? Or the kid Wiggins? I'd rather have Kool-Aid if I have to go draft here. Or, like I said, do you trade the 22nd pick to Chicago? Well, he's a free agent now. Though it depends tomorrow. It depends tomorrow. If the Bears tag him tomorrow, you'll know what Jalen Johnson and his future is in Chicago. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that tag is like over $20 million for a corner. Okay? Twenty three is Houston. Jesus. Houston's sitting at 23. They got $67 million in cap space, and they're good. Man, Nick Casario is in such a great place. I take that 23rd pick. What do they need? They need edge rushers. They need people on defense, and they're going to hang over there on that side of the ball, or maybe O-line. They got Jeremy Tunsil. He's playing great ball. Dallas at 24. Dallas has to use this pick. Why does Dallas have to use their pick and not trade it? Or they trade out of one and down because of the money. They're $14 million in the red. Dallas can't sit here and jack around with that pick. 24th pick? I mean, they need another wideout. They got shit out of the other guys. They got a good, the tight end is their second best offensive player. And I would draft a, probably a receiver. Their back end is great. They're getting digs back too. Dallas is 14 million in the hole. They got to figure out Dak. Green Bay's at 25. I would say this about Green Bay. What do they need?
Secondary? Secondary? O-line. Yep. Yep. O-line. The dirt, Green Bay's a lot like Philly. O-line. Yep. Big Chris. O-line. O-line. Yes, sir. The Bucks got to replace Mike Evans. You know, they've already informed him that they're not picking his deal up. Because they don't want to pay him $20 million, $25 million. Mike Evans is going to get that money. God forbid that guy lands in Kansas City. God forbid he lands in KC. Now, he may not get that money because he's 31. But Mike Evans is a sure thing. You put him in Kansas City or Justin Jefferson. Dude, I'll tell you what. Kansas City, $25 million of cap space. And you got two decisions to be made at wideout that guys can impact your team. And that guy needs – can you imagine how much better Kansas City would be with Evans or Justin Jefferson? It'd be a different team. They're going to move off – you're either moving off of Snead or you're moving off of Chris Jones. But you're moving off of one of them. You can't – you're not going to pay both of them. One guy's going to get 30 and the other guy's going to get 20. And you got $23 million. You got to pay your – you got to pay your rookies. Okay. 26 is the Bucks. Or I mean, Bucks don't need it. Bucks are probably going to stick with going for Evans, like I just said. Maybe a quarterback. Arizona gets their second pick. They got the fourth and the 27th pick. Where would Arizona go? Arizona's got to do everything in their power to see if Kyler Murray's the guy. Do you go running back here? I don't know if there's one um, qualified to be in that position, so I'd probably go wide out. By the way, where do I think that kid Bowers goes? The Giants. Washington. If I was going to draft the kid Bowers from Georgia – How about Chicago? The first pick in the draft, you draft a kid Bowers. That tight end for Justin Fields. Jets, Bowers is not going to be there by 10. Absolutely no way. Now, I would rather have the tight end than Marvin Harrison Jr. Tight ends are harder to cover in the NFL today. Why? Because there's less linebackers in the league today. There's there's more good corners in the league. Go by the numbers. Remember that. Always play the averages when you're building a team. What guy has a better chance of getting open every game? The tight end. Because there's not when when you play teams like the Giants, the Eagles, the Cardinals, um, the Titans, Carolina, they're all shitty linebackers. You're, you're, you're going to run into a good corner on any one of those teams. Okay? You're going to run into good corners. You're not going to run into very many good linebackers. You're just not. Boy, I, I, Washington for Bowers, he won't get past New England because of the the history they had with Gronk. I could see them New England taking him third. Okay, I could see them taking him third. Kirk Cousins up there in New England. Cousins to Bowers. Chargers getting him at five? Wow. With Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen? That might be something to look at for um, Jim Harbaugh. The kid Bowers, Keenan Allen, and Justin Herbert. Baltimore's at 28. I'm hearing that they're looking at um, – we were talking about Alvin Kamara. Okay, 
We were talking about Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara, supposedly, there's some sort of conversation with the Saints and Alvin Kamara and, and Baltimore. That'd be somebody where, imagine Alvin Kamara in Baltimore with um, Lamar Jackson. You got Detroit at 29. What do they need? Secondary help. San Francisco at 31. Replace Ayuk. Maybe another old lineman. Wow, that's a great one there. Who said that? Denny, Mike Evans to Baltimore. Man, Mike Evans is going to, he's going to change a team. He's going to change a team. Can you imagine? Look at this. So Mike Evans in Baltimore. The Rams. Houston. Dallas. Dallas don't have the money. Detroit. Green Bay. Mike Evans to Green Bay for Jordan Love. I think the organization would probably go for that. You know why? You got to be sold on the kid. I mean, you've got to be sold on him. Watching him play. Hey, he had just as much, in my opinion, you have to be just as sold on him as you were sold on Hertz after one year. Okay? I mean, this guy threw for 31 touchdowns. Over four grand to dismantle the Cowboys. He was awful good, man. He was awful good. Evans to Indy to help Richardson. Plus, you have Jonathan Taylor running the ball. And I do think they're going to, you know what, too? And I think they're going to franchise tag Michael Pittman. Okay. I think they're going to franchise tag him. So that could end that. Now, Tone, to your point, if they don't tag Pittman, that could be a home for Evans. They're not going to put – now, wait a minute. Could you put two $20 million wide receivers on a team with a quarterback that's on a rookie deal? Yes. That's where that works. That would be frightening. Pittman, Evans, Taylor, and I like – hey, I'll tell you what. Anthony Richardson, I thought Shane Steichen did a nice job. I thought he did a nice job with him for the amount of plays that I saw him playing. I, I, I really did. I thought he did. Kansas City, what would they take? It's got to be tackle, de-tackle. If you're going to let Chris Jones go, you're going to have to draft a defensive tackle or trade out of that pick to get multiple picks because 32, I don't know. You, you know, you have to be in, when you're down there like that, you got to be in love with a guy. DT or corner. It's going to decide who they, yeah. Tomorrow, the franchise tag, that'll determine what Kansas city's going to do. I think that the right, you see how this all falls in, in, in play now. You're figuring out what I have to do money wise. Say, let's just use like like Yale was saying this earlier. They're totally talking about this Devontae Smith deal. This Devontae Smith May 2nd deal is a pretty key date for them. Okay. You're not going to let Devontae Smith. This would be his final year. And he'd be a free agent in the offseason. You're not doing that. You're totally not doing that. Yeah, that's what I do. Guy goes out and gets 1,300 yards or another 1,000-yard season. He got 4,000 yards. He's got another 100-catch season. You're going to let that guy walk into the offseason, a free agent? I'll tell you what, maybe his representation would like that because on the open market, he's a $25 million a year guy. I think so too, Tone. I think they've got to pick that option up to protect themselves. You can't do this, okay? You've got to pick that fifth-year option up. 
And that means 15 million automatically punched to your, you see how that, you know, the money that you're going to save by getting the buyer deal done by cutting him 13, you net 2 million after that. When, once you put that extension on there, you got $15 million added 13 off. Okay. Minus 2 million. You lost $2 million on that transaction to your cap. All of that is going to play in how you rebuild. All right, let me take a time out. Please hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. Go for the pulls and the pools. Go for the ooze and the oz. Go for the bubbles and the bubbly. Go for the story and the stories. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their Fantasy Pick'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday. Watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game. And the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. I saw um, Yale talking about my Islanders. And, hey, Yale, I'll tell you, one of the coolest things ever was becoming friends with Dennis Potvin. And when I was a young kid, I used to go to the Nassau County War Memorial Coliseum. And that place would go crazy when Denny Potvin was out there. And I got to be friends with him. And he was so unbelievably cool. And I think he, he retired. He used to work for um, uh, the Canadian uh, network with uh, Don Cherry. And he used to do all them games. Um, yeah, man. I get a fitted, Sills. I know. No, this is an old school one. This goes back to the old Islander days. I was given this. This was like this. This hat's like 35 years old. And uh, yeah, no, this is this is an old school island Islander hat. Actually, got it from the Coliseum. Okay, before they moved out of there, four in a row, baby. Hey, watch a hey, a hey, shooter, Billy Smith and Net, um, Brian Trottier, Nicola, no, Brian Trottier, Mike Bossy, 
who was the guy from the U.S. team, the 1980 U- U.S. team, that was the defenseman on the blue line? Who was the guy? What was his name? Shit. Oh, man, what was his name? What was that dude's name, man? God. I forget that guy's name. They had so many great ball. They had so many great players. It it, it took the Gretzky team uh, to beat them. Wayne Gretzky um, told me a story that those guys at the end of – get this. They, went to, they won four straight cups. Ken Morrow, that's it. Thank you, Shooter. Ken Morrow was on that U.S. 1980 men's uh, hockey team that won the uh, gold medal in Lake Placid. Yeah, he was Ken Morrow was on the um, was on the Islander teams that won all them cups. Absolutely, they had another guy too that was on that team. Ron or Ray, man, those teams were so great to watch. Bossy was unbelievable. He was just absolutely unbelievable. Mike Bossy, great hockey player. All right. Guys, I appreciate it. You guys were sensational today. Thank you so much for coming aboard. Um, We're going to get into the draft tomorrow, and we'll do the draft. Xander, Big Joe, we thank you. Tone, great stuff as always. Thank you, Meryl Reese, for coming aboard with us. Appreciate everybody, and we shall see you on the flip side. bubbles and the bubbly go for the story and the stories go for the win go to ocean casino resort book your trip at the ocean 